Hey guys, welcome to the channel, as you see in the thumbnail what if, Naruto got extremely dense harem. Before I start, please do support for more awesome content, and subscribe my channel and like this video. Though support and follow the Theoretically for writing that awesome fanfic, and also make sure to comment on this story, link in the description. Let's start this video. Only thing he remembered was hearing his opponent saying she was a broken tool that didn't deserve to be alive. He had recognized her face, the same woman from the woods. Naruto quelled his rage, noticing that he was outside of the ice mirrors, startled that he wasn't injured at all. Naruto was about to say something to Haku, but a strange noise interrupted him. It sounded like a mix of birds and electricity. He then heard Kakashi-sensei yell out Chidori. Haku turned to Naruto and said, I'm sorry, but I am needed right now she started to run towards the strange noise. Naruto could tell right away what she was planning. He ran after her, only to see his sensei aiming a chakra-filled hand towards Zabuza. Haku had managed to get between Kakashi and Zabuza and steadied herself for certain death. Kakashi sensei stop. Naruto yelled out. Kakashi, who lost concentration due to his student's outburst, stopped suddenly, and his hand came into contact harmlessly with Zabuza's partner, Haku. The nin dogs holding Zabuza in place poofed out of existence, but before he could move at all, Kakashi spoke out looks like we have company. Zabuza turned towards the end of the bridge. There stood Gato along with a small army of thugs, all of them harboring a wicked smile. What are you doing here? I can take care of this by myself. Zabuza yelled angrily. Naruto on the other hand was spacing out. What just happened? I'm not hurt anymore. Could this be the work of the fox? Naruto looked at Zabuza when he heard his name. Hey brat, give me your kunai. The only response Naruto gave was a whatever as he threw his kunai softly at the missing nin. Zabuza caught the kunai and ran straight towards Gatos's private army, killing any who got in his way. What is he? He's the devil. Gato screamed as Zabuza closed the distance between them. Zabuza was moving quickly, even with several swords and sickles on his back, caused by the mob surrounding Gato. I'll see you in hell. Zabuza yelled as he slashed Gato repeatedly. With each slash, Zabuza was greeted with painful cries coming from Gato. Each pain-filled cry is more satisfying than the one before. Zabuza stopped at the end of the bridge and took a look at the dying man. Zabuza ended Gatos's wretched life with one final slash at his throat, effectively knocking the man off the bridge. Zabuza turned and began to trudge slowly towards Kakashi and his blonde student. The mob separated from Zabuza's path. Zabuza fell towards the ground only to be caught by Kakashi. The silver-haired ninja looked at Zabuza with respect and returned to Naruto and Haku. Haku watched as her master was placed carefully on the floor. She ran towards her dying father figure. She knelt and caressed his head. No tears left her eyes, she has been through so much already. She knew what death was and had become part of everyday life for her. Haku was going to say I failed you Zabuza-sama, but was interrupted by Zabuza. Haku you didn't fail me I'm glad it ended like this you don't deserve anything that's happened to you. Amongst the words he spoke were bloody coughs. Naruto turned away, but he heard Zabuza calling for him. Hey, Brat Naruto walked towards Zabuza and knelt next to Haku, listening attentively. You have a good heart but take Haku with you. Give her a good life. Huh? What? Naruto said in confusion. He looked at Zabuza, he had a dead serious look. Naruto then looked at Haku, she had a shocked expression as well, but was processing the information until her face relaxed and spoke to Naruto. Then Naruto Asama she stuttered for a moment, letting the name sink in. End of flashback. Naruto looked at Haku, she was relaxed and looked at him worriedly. Before they could say anything, the door opened and a head of pink hair spoke up. Hey Naruto Baka, are you awake? She started, but got distracted by the Kinoichi across the room. Sakura remembered Haku from the bridge, as an enemy that is. She took out a kunai and yelled what the hell are you doing in here? Wait, Sakura-chan, she's not an enemy. She's my friend. Naruto explained, receiving an odd look from both Haku and Sakura. His friend. Sakura and Haku thought simultaneously. Sakura relaxed, but didn't take her eyes off the missing nin. Well hurry up, Naruto-kun. Breakfast is getting cold. What did I just say? Since when do I call him Naruto-kun? Sakura thought as she left towards the kitchen, shocked at the honorific she just gave him. Naruto was thinking the same thing. What did she call me? Naruto-kun. Haku just stood there, looking at the expression of the young blonde. Interesting Haku thought as a small smile formed on her face. After a quick and awkward breakfast, due to Sasuke staring at Haku with eyes that can pierce through skin, the five ninja left towards Konoha. Haku and Naruto were the ones leading, Sasuke and Sakura in the center, and Kakashi covering the back. There was no real reason for this order, the ninja had distanced themselves from each other. Mainly Sasuke and Sakura from Haku and Naruto, they did not trust her at all, and Haku was feeling disturbed by their glares. 
Aku noticed that Naruto was unusually quiet and asked Naruto-sama, is there anything bothering you? Naruto broke from his momentary silence and said him. Everything is fine, but can you at least drop the sama? You could call me Naruto-kun or just Naruto. Aku looked confused and with a small smile she said nicely I am sorry Naruto-sama, but Naruto-sama is the only name I can call my master. Haku laughed silently at Naruto's irritated reaction. Sasuke and Sakura were staring at the duo with killing intent, Sasuke, and concern, Sakura. They both said simultaneously I don't trust her, not one bit. Meanwhile, Kakashi was reading a certain orange book while giggling happily. A simple thought was crossing his mind itcha 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 itcha. Naruto on the other hand was having a discussion with himself that was shaking his worldview. The world isn't what I thought it was, betrayal, death, and paranoia. Every ninja faces this every day, if I want to become Hokage, I need to get stronger and accept these terms. Naruto unknowingly matured during this mission, more so than anyone could have ever guessed. Although his goal of becoming Hokage remained unchanged, he started thinking about the future more than before. The old Naruto theoretically died on the bridge, but a new Naruto. Not as spontaneous or dim-witted, but one who thought before he acted. Aku stared at her young master with interest as his face started to twist in deep thought. Naruto-sama, I know something isn't right, please tell me what is wrong. Haku said softly, her voice showed deep concern for Naruto. Naruto broke out of his trance and decided not to tell her the reason. You don't need to worry about me Haku-chan, I'm just a little bit hungry. He didn't lie, anybody who even remotely knew Naruto would learn of his huge appetite. Sakura suddenly lost her footing and tripped, Sasu couldn't care any less, but decided to catch her. They could only think something is wrong, it involves Naruto, but what? Sasuke was surprised no, he was shocked. He caught Sakura and she hasn't even said anything. He sighed happily, he was spared the migraine by some mystical being. Tears of happiness rolled up in his eyes, after setting Sakura down, he ran towards the tree branch on which Sakura tripped. He looked around everywhere and looked up at the sky and said almost with respect Kami. Is this your work? If it is, show me a sign. As if on cue, Kakashi, who was still reading his little book, stepped on said holy branch, tripped and dropped the book. Said book was then mauled by a raccoon, and the remains flew away in the breeze. Bakashi screamed in agony. Sasuke was overjoyed and began cutting the branch off of the tree, while screaming praise Kami. Meanwhile Haku was getting bombarded with information that involved Raymond. She made the dreaded mistake of questioning Naruto's favorite food. Haku had half a mind on knocking Naruto out, but stopped when she had a sudden craving for. Raymond. And that's how Raymond not only saved my life for the 23rd time, but how it stopped a war with a village hidden in the CS. Now do you doubt the power of Raymond Haku-chan? Naruto said enthusiasm evident on his face after hearing her stomach grumble midway through his Raymond-based stories. Come on Haku-chan. My stories didn't affect you. Sakura was getting nervous, she tripped a total of three times already. She was positive that Naruto had something to do with her clumsiness. Sakura caught up with her blonde teammate and had to call his name several times to get his attention away from Haku. Um Naruto. What are you and Haku talking about? She said calmly until she said her name. Sakura did not like Haku at all. She hurt Sasuke-kun. She deserves a horrible death. Sakura thought. Or maybe it's because Naruto isn't showing his undying attention towards you. Inner Sakura said with a smirk. What the f? Sakura set out with a small blush, while receiving an odd look from Naruto, and an amused smirk from Haku. So what were you two talking about? Sakura repeated, slightly embarrassed. Oh, I was telling Haku ch Naruto got interrupted by Haku suddenly. Naruto-kun was asking if I would mind having lunch with him when we get back to Konoha. Haku said with an evil smirk that only got wider after seeing a vein popping out on the forehead of the dot. Naruto, who was oblivious to what happened between his two Kanoichi friends, happily said I knew my stories would make you see things my way. Aku used this opportunity to tease Sakura a little bit more oh yes Naruto-kun, they certainly did. I can't wait. She ended the sentence with a devious smirk. Oh Sakura gulped as she saw the way Haku looked at Naruto. She then noticed how quickly Naruto calmed down, he looked as if he matured over the past couple of days. W well, I hope you guys have a good time. Sakura added quickly. The group of ninjas made their way through the gates of Konoha, the guards giving strange looks at Kakashi and Sasuke. It looked as if Kakashi witnessed the murder of a family member. And Sasuke was holding a huge branch to which he called Precious. Kakashi between sniffles said to Haku you need to report to the Hokage. He'll decide whether or not you can stay here. Naruto, you lead her to the Hokage Tower. What will you do Kakashi-sensei? Naruto asked, slightly confused. Kakashi sighed. I need to get a black suit, a small book-shaped casket and a burial site. Then he teleported away into the shadows. 
Haku, Naruto, and Sakura sweat dropped at this and left toward the Hokage Tower, until Haku said something to Sakura, why are you going with us? Naruto nodded slightly. It's true Sakura-chan, don't you need to rest and let your parents know you're back? Naruto said as nice as he could. Sakura winced at the response she had gotten from Naruto, she thought he would have wanted her there. Why yeah I know, but Ino's house is in the direction of the Hokage Tower, I need to tell her something. Were you? That was a close one. She thought to herself. Mai always thought that Ino hated Sakura who no matter. The trio walked towards the tower. All along the way, Naruto had been talking to Haku about all of the sights that needed to be seen and the like. Haku paid attention, not Naruto, but at the villagers who gave Naruto a nasty look whenever he passed by. This feels familiar Haku thought solemnly. After parting ways with a somewhat bummed Sakura, the blonde and brunette entered the tower and approached the Hokage. Oi, Jiji-san. Naruto said happily. Ah Naruto, good to see you again, how have you been lately? The Hokage said calmly. Listen old man, we need to talk about something serious. Naruto said abruptly while pointing at the door. The door opened and Haku walked in, bowed and stood behind Naruto. Rather closely, the Hokage noted. Before the Hokage could ask who she was, Naruto explained everything from the beginning. One hour later. I see Hokage said while taking a deep breath of his pipe. Haku you realize I have to find out if you actually want to revert to Konoha. Haku looked at the Hokage with calm eyes and sighed. I understand Hokage-san. She looked at the confused Naruto and looked at her feet, sadly. Do not worry Haku, you are now welcomed here in the village. I noticed that you indeed care for Naruto. At this, Haku smiled and looked at Naruto. He was looking at her too. He gave her a foxy smirk and turned his attention back to the Hokage. Haku was indeed taking a liking to Naruto, she blushed slightly when she received his foxy grin, and she thought he liked her too. Unfortunately, Naruto is extremely dense and oblivious, he thought of Haku as a close friend, one he could always rely on. Even so, Naruto please come back for Haku in two weeks. By regulation, she has to take specific exams to show her skills as a ninja. You're dismissed Naruto. Before Naruto could say anything against this he was escorted outside by several Anbu squads. Once outside, Naruto decided to head home. He walked with his hands in his pocket and his head facing the floor. He was deep in thought, thinking about what happened in the past several weeks. His thoughts were broken after he heard a faint growl. He turned towards the noise and saw a tail sticking out of a bush. He gently reached his hands for the hurt animal and barely flinched when he got bit. When he pulled the animal out of the bush he was surprised to see a completely black fox. The villagers still hate foxes, huh? He thought sadly. After the attack on Kanoha by the Kaiubi, foxes of all kinds were suddenly hated. They couldn't be sold as pets, and owners of said animals had to pay a hefty tax. Naruto looked at the little fox and instantly felt bad for it, and decided to take it to the only place he could think of, the Inuzuka veterinarians. He remembered the location after running away from one angry Aruka who caught them, Naruto, Kiba, Shikamaru, and Choji, skipping class. Kiba hid the group in one of his clan's veterinarian buildings. Naruto opened the door and saw the whole waiting room empty. He was greeted by a really brash vet, Hana Inuzuka. Hana sighed as she saw the empty waiting room, this day is too freaking long. Well I guess it's okay considering there are no hurt animals, but come on. She thought as she was carving her nails into her desk. Her ears perked up when she heard the familiar noise of the door opening, finally somebody to save me from boredom's deadly grasp. Hana thought happily. Who she saw surprised her, blonde hair, deep blue eyes that could put a river to shame, and whiskers like markings on his face. Hana knew the boy was saying something, but she couldn't make out the words, her attention was elsewhere. So, as I was saying, could you help this fox? Um, hello? Naruto asked while waving his hands in front of the tattooed veterinarian, who seemed to snap back into reality. Hana stepped back and saw a slightly confused Naruto petting a small black fox. She immediately noticed that the fox was injured and took it from Naruto without even saying anything. Oh my, internal bleeding, five broken bones, and minor scratches all over its torso, just what happened to you fox? Hana thought sadly. She was surprised to see the poor thing still alive, until she remembered how much the village hates foxes, due to the nine-tailed demon attack several years ago. Stupid villagers, they just have to take out their anger on these poor animals. Hana thought with such intensity that even Naruto had to step back several feet. The brunette turned around and called for some people, less than a second later, several nurses arrived and took the fox to a room. I'm sorry about that, um, what's your name again? Hana asked, slightly embarrassed. My name is Naruto Yuzumaki. Future Hokage of this village. Exclaimed the blonde while sporting a nice guy pose. What Hana heard was completely different, James Bond style, Yuzumaki Naruto Yuzumaki. She looked at him with a perverted smirk. 
the Inuzuka insider began to emerge, something Hana tried to suppress outside of her household. The only times it would come out was when she saw something she wanted or when she was around meat. Naruto was the latter. Naruto, who couldn't see the smirk, asked normally is the fox going to be okay? It looked pretty bad, and it even bit me. I'm pretty sure some villagers attacked it. Naruto said until he noticed Hana ready to pounce on something. Naruto turned and didn't see anything, looked back at Hana and asked are you okay? Is there something on my face? Hana, completely under the Inuzuka hormones by the way, smirked as intentions filled her head. I only get like this when I get hungry, Naruto Hana said, showing her canines and singing to her dot. Most men would believe they were in heaven if they were in the place of Naruto, but then again, Naruto is denser than a lead brick. I know. I'll go get some ramen. Naruto then headed to his favorite restaurant until Hana said something that nobody should ever say a ramen. That stuff is disgusting. Naruto stopped right in front of the door, his head turned 180 degrees like the exorcist, birds flew from their nests along with several pigs, the Inuzuka dogs began howling, and for some reason Shino began to foam at the mouth, while his teammates began to flip out over the weird things happening. What is going for? Surprisingly, that was Hinata. Over at Ichirakus. Gucci was working happily until the pots began to boil, and the ramen in said pot spelled out in a creepy way 3 miso and 4 beef, now. Naruto Tucci didn't waste any time and had the orders ready in several seconds, he was truly terrified. Back at the Inuzuka veterinarian offices. Hana was in the corner of the waiting room, sheer terror in her eyes as she saw Naruto covered in a black aura. He made several hand signs and shadow clones appeared, the clone left and was back within a minute. It was holding several bowls, a sweet aroma hit Hana and Naruto spoke up. Let me educate you Hana. He said a demonic was expecting a horrible pain-filled death, but instead she got swarmed with stories that revolved around Raymond, the dark aura faded, and Naruto returned to normal. Hana had relaxed somewhat and got scared when Naruto placed a table in front of her. Beat, Hana. You know you want to. Naruto said with an evil smirk as he placed a beef Raymond in front of her. Not knowing what to do, she picked up her chopsticks and lowered them down towards the noodles. She had to admit, after hearing all those stories about Raymond, she began craving them. Naruto had a way with words, if only those words weren't only about Raymon. Naruto watched impatiently as Hana was trudging her chopstick so slowly even Shikamaru would be impressed. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. Naruto yelled to himself. Hana finally got the courage to get a good amount and slurped it all in one go. Hana dropped her chopsticks. Naruto looked at Hana expectantly. Ah bump both of their hearts sounded. The bowls were empty. What happened was something only Naruto could see. Hana had eaten all four bowls in a heartbeat, literally in a heartbeat. Naruto got up, raised his fist in the air, and yelled at Abeo. I knew it. It's impossible to hate Raymond. Hana blushed at Naruto's victory yell, not only did Naruto misinterpret the veterinarian, he also made a new Raymond addict. She confirmed this by gulping down the three miso bowls that Naruto was about to eat. Naruto grinned happily, he had restored the honor of Raymond and made another good friend. Seriously, is there anything Raymond can't do? Naruto thought as he saw Hana smile, but what he didn't notice was the huge red blush on her face. An. Seriously, Naruto can detect traps and ninja in the darkness, but he can't notice a huge red mark on somebody's face. But Sasuke. As soon as Sasuke got back to Konoha, he immediately went to test his holy branch by going into the busy market section. The people who saw Sasuke wanted to greet the young prodigy, but stopped suddenly when they noticed the huge tree branch he was holding. Not only that, but it seemed as if he was talking to it, the pride and joy of Konoha, was talking to a branch. It works. It actually works on everyone. Nobody has even come up to me. Sasuke thought with tears in his eyes. That's when everybody cleared the path for the Ichiha, they had seen a huge smile form on his face for no reason, then he started to cry, while keeping his twisted smile. Sasuke kept his smile all the way to his own training area, once there he set the branch down carefully and began to practice his fighting moves I need to get stronger Sasuke thought. A figurative light bulb turned on in his head. If the branch had such an effect on people, how would it be if it was a weapon? His thoughts were interrupted as thousands of birds and pigs went flying up into the air while there were hundreds of dogs howling. Sasuke then heard what is going on. The voice sounded feminine. Sasuke got interested, an. Who wouldn't? and followed the origin of the voice. What he found disturbed him slightly. It was teammate, Kiba was dragging his butt through the ground while Akamaru howled up into the air, and Shino was foaming from the mouth, while his whole body twitched harshly as if he was having a seizure, Hinata on the other hand was dodging the falling feces from said birds and pigs with little success. He turned back towards his branch before a big steaming pile of, well you know, hit the Hyuga Eris right in the air. Idiot Sasuke said as he grabbed his branch and headed home while he pictured his new sword. Back with Naruto. 
After the Raymond fiasco had ended, Naruto and Hana began talking. So Hana-chan, Sakura slipped down the stairs in her house, why aren't you healing the fox? Naruto asked while giving Hana one of his foxy smirks. W well, normally I would but I'm on probation since I beat a man into a coma when he brought his injured pet. Hana stuttered due to embarrassment of retelling her crime and the smirk that Naruto had given her. Naruto sweat dropped at her answer and asked any particular reason you did that. Hana looked at him with a twitch and remembered she hadn't told Naruto of her clan's ability. Well you see Naruto, since our clan has a strong connection with animals, we can understand them. She responded and giggled at Naruto's reaction. The poor thing told me that its master constantly beat it, I had no choice, but to put that horrible man into dust Hana yelled with confidence that made Naruto join her in her victory pose, holding the V sign with their fingers. So what did the poor fox say to you when you picked it up? Naruto asked as he gained his composure. Hana wanted to slap her forehead so hard when she heard Naruto. I'm sorry, let me rephrase what I said. I meant that Inuzuka can communicate with dogs, and only dogs. I guess that makes sense, how else would Kiba be able to understand Akimaru? Naruto said. Their conversation continued without any haste, which involved training, food, and goals in life. When Naruto asked Hana what her dreams were, she sat there, staring at him with a dumbfounded look. He's really caring, he listens, and he wants to know my dream. Just where have you been all this time Naruto? Hana thought as a small blush formed on her face. Then my dream is to become the next leader of my clan. In Naruto W what are you doing? Hana asked as Naruto inched his face closer to hers. Hana, please stay still, this'll be over quick. Naruto whispered as he was about several inches away from her face. Oh. So quickly. We just met today. What do I do? Hana thought in a hurry as Naruto was now several centimeters away. What do I care about? He's going to me. Hana started to pucker her fur, but instead she felt something cold on her forehead. Hana opened her eyes and saw blonde hair near her eyes and quickly asked and Naruto. W what are you doing? She asked nervously. I noticed your face getting red and I wanted to check if you had a fever. I've seen nurses do this to patients before so I thought I should try it. Naruto said sheepishly. Well thanks for worrying about Naruto-kun, I really appreciate it. Hana said happily. Maybe he's taking things slowly. I shouldn't rush either. No problem Hana-chan. I'll always be there for my special people. Dadabeo. Naruto responded with a big smile on his face. Naruto looked outside and saw the sun about to set. He looked at Hana and hugged her before saying I'm sorry, but I have to head home now. I'll come back tomorrow okay. Hana felt safe and secure in his arms, her blush was growing, and when he said he'll be back tomorrow her heart skipped a beat. Technically, Naruto didn't say for whom he was coming back for either her or the fox. Hana hadn't thought about this and began anticipating the following day, like how a little kid anticipates a birthday or holiday. Naruto left the building and began to sprint home. In his hurry, he didn't even notice Sakura sitting on a bench right next to the building. She saw everything after they bumped foreheads. It looked like he was declaring his love to her. The blush on the Inuzuka vet didn't help Sakura's judgment of the situation. She began to feel a mixture of jealousy and guilt. Naruto hasn't talked to her the same way since they met Haku, and now Hana. I must have been a real terrible person to him she thought solemnly. Naruto was in distress, he had reached an ultimatum. It was tragic, something he'll surely regret when the time comes. He had a choice in front of him, one that needs to be answered now or never. Ba bump, ba bump, ba bump. His heart raced, almost as it was about to explode. Anybody who saw the young blonde would guess he was in a life or death situation. Why does this have to be so hard? He thought angrily. Naruto had a choice. Go to sleep hungry or wake up hungry. It was dire indeed. Naruto didn't get to eat at all during the day, due to Hana developing an addiction to Raymond. She had eaten him and he didn't notice at all. FCK'd. Naruto yelled as he grabbed all 12 of his instant Raymond cups and placed them next to some boiling water. He was going to eat damn it, he's willing to pay the price tomorrow, just to have a taste of heaven today. Several minutes later. Naruto was in his bed, content with his little Raymond genocide. He was tired, but satisfied. Before the blonde could guess, he fell asleep with drool plastered on his face. Naruto began to stir, something was bothering him. Naruto opened his eyes and began to hear the most terrifying song as he saw two women in front of him. One was blonde and had purple fingerless gloves with red beads going around her left arm. The other was a brunette with long hair, a blue band top knot was holding a ponytail, while some bangs covered her right eye, which were green. The song continued to play, then both women began to sing, terrifying was an understatement as the song continued. All my life I've been debating. All the crows they sit there waiting. Wondering what I'm going to eat. Until I have it I can't breathe. I only see you on the floor. Your heart's not beating anymore. Life for you just cannot wait. 
Your skin it tastes like chocolate. Staring blankly at the sun. Waiting for my time to come. Your happy life it makes me sick. All the screaming sounds like music. Losing all my holy dreams. Someone tell me what they mean. There's an iron smell of. Blood in the air. But I can't find it anywhere. I've been waiting for someone to find me. And become a part of me. I've been waiting for you. To come here. And love me. And set me free. And we're coming for you. Naruto screamed as his head jerked upwards, it was a nightmare. He couldn't shake the odd feeling that the dream gave him. He was covered in sweat and it was 5 in the morning. Sleep was impossible, so Naruto took a quick shower and waited for the comforting sunshine. Sunshine broke out onto Konoha, people set out to do their usual morning rituals, and shops began to open. Naruto, who was still contemplating his nightmare, ran as fast as he could towards Ichirakus. A.M. yawned as she opened the stand onto the public. Think of the money A.M., just think of the money she thought anxiously. Her father had promised A.M. a bonus if she opened up the stand for the early birds. A.M. thought her father had gone insane when he told her an unbelievable story. Flashback. I'm telling you A.M. The Raymond began to boil even though the stoves were off. You have to believe me A.M. The Raymond even spelled a message. A message from Naruto. It was the scar. Yay yay, it spelled out a message. Sure. Then flashback. As A.M. recalled the strange talk with her father, a young blonde was currently waiting for the waitress to snap back into reality. Ahem. The blonde said and awoke A.M. Naruto-kun what are you doing here so early? A.M. yelled out curiously. A.M. had recently discovered her true feelings for him. He was always there for her, he listened, and he always gave her compliments. Sure, sometimes he was immature, but he was young. Time would change him into the perfect boy for A.M. She thought once her affection to him was something like a little brother kind of love, but her feelings escalated to something new when he had talked about his teammate Sakura. She loathed the whole conversation, Sakura this or Sakura that. She got really jealous, she didn't even try to deny it. He looked so innocent, so easy to molest I mean hug. So easy to hug. Bad am. No more naughty thoughts. Maybe Naruto could punish me for being naughty no. Not again enough with that. She thought, her face showing the different emotions emanating from her thoughts. Aim Chan, I need some Raymond and life advice right now please. Naruto said sleepily. He didn't get much sleep, the nightmare had denied him that. Aim squealed with delight on the inside. He's coming towards me for advice. This is a whole new level of our friendship. Maybe now it'll grow into something better. That's sure Naruto-kun, however can I help? Aim said while trying to cover her blush. I had a nightmare last night. It was strange and extremely scary, there were two women singing this song. They seemed so real. What do you think this means A.M. San? Naruto asked sincerely. S.A.N. I'm not even good enough for Chan. I can't give up. Naruto has never given up. I surely won't, maybe my determination will make him see me in a new way. A.M. thought. She had flinched when Naruto called her San, the common honorific for everyday people, a.k.a. Nobody important. Well Naruto-kun, she paused letting the name go into effect. She stretched the honorific to imply her hopes. Unfortunately they went unnoticed by Naruto. Why you were saying A.M. San? Thump. A.M. had set the bowl of Raymond Hart after her effort went unnoticed. The bowl began to crack under the women's grasp. Careful you'll break the bowl and hurt the Raymond Naruto screamed as he eyed the bowl. Not even good enough for San now. A.M. thought with such anger the pots behind her began to boil. Her father didn't seem so crazy now. A.M. Quickly, save the Raymond before it burns. Hurry A.M. Ak. A.M. had grabbed Naruto by the throat and was nearly choking him, her feelings for the boy was the only thing stopping her from breaking his spine. Of course Naruto kun. Save your precious Raymond. A.M. growled with anguish as she grabbed a huge pot of Raymond and began to shove all of the contents into his mouth. What did I do to deserve this this blessing? Naruto thought happily as pot after pot went to his mouth, releasing the great noodles onto his stomach. A.M. reached out for another pot, but noticed there were no more left, she dropped Naruto and closed the stand without saying a single word. Naruto cleaned himself off and said hm guess A.M. Chan isn't good with advice, just Raymond. Ah well Naruto began to wander off into the town, not even noticing the hands reaching for the back of his head. I think I'll go train for a bit, just to get my mind away from that nightmare. Naruto set out, he then ran towards his training ground, while slightly avoiding the hands of the mysterious stranger. Curses, he got away. For now. Kukikuku the stranger thought as an evil smirk rose from the stranger's mouth. Sasuke and his holy branch. H.N. Sasuke smiled with pride as he looked at his new weapon. Picture a little wooden sword with uneven edges and its point all splintery, with this I'll avenge my clan and have ultimate power. I've never been so happy and sure of myself. Sasuke yelled with a mixture of anger and pride. 
Not if I can help it little brother a figure thought in the distance and teleported away. In the woods. Foolish little animals, if you wish to kill me, hate me, detest me. And yet survive in an unsightly way. Run, run and cling to life, and when you have attacked this man until you succeed, come to me. And then you'll get your revenge. Itachi said calmly while looking at several dead animals and one little bird that was still alive. Tell all the animals what you just saw, and tell them who you need to attack, for that is the way into your revenge. Itachi held up a photo, the bird analyzed the photo and flew away deeper into the forest. Let this be a test for you brother, let's see how you can do against the animalistic behavior of the um animals. Itachi thought melodramatically before poofing away into the shadows. Shit just got real for Sasuke. Back with Naruto. Naruto was at his training site, practicing his accuracy on kunai and shuriken. His accuracy needed vast improvement, and Kakashi mentioned it whenever he could. After hitting a poor, defenseless tree several hundred times with his weapons, he decided on making several shadow clones moving targets will help me more than this. Naruto thought. Before he could throw a kunai he heard screaming. Ah. New. Was all that Naruto heard before venturing towards the noise, it turned out to be Kiba. Kiba was swatting away invisible attackers, obviously a dot Naruto was amazed at how much can help I need to learn, screw weapons, those can wait. Naruto thought with determination. He scanned the area until he saw a woman in her mid-twenties, she had red eyes, and was the one controlling the dot. Naruto made his way behind her and tapped her shoulder, she gasped immediately grabbed a kunai, which was then placed on his throat. She had turned the tables on the intruder as she was behind him holding him hostage. Wait. Ak I'm not an enemy Ak Naruto barely managed to speak out, he was getting his windpipe smothered and couldn't breathe. Kurinai, without letting go of Naruto, said oh, is that so? Then perhaps you're a pervert. She gripped him harder, he was running out of air, unconsciousness was going to get to him soon. I'm dot one dot dot of dot kibas dot dot friends. Naruto choked before passing out. Several minutes later. Hey. Are you okay? Talk to me kid. Naruto heard before he slightly opened his eyes. There he saw the same lady that choked him a few minutes earlier. She was pacing back and forth in front of him, she even had a worried expression on her face. What have I done? I never meant for him to arg. Me and my paranoia. Kurinai thought before saying it's okay, don't panic Kurinai, you have a boat. You can dump him in the river. There's heavy rocks right here, nobody will suspect a thing. She said with newfound confidence. Naruto heard everything, I should run, but she'll catch me, and either she'll force me not to say anything or. She'll kill me, for real this time. I gotta play this safe. He thought as Kurinai picked him up and stepped over Kiba's fainted body. Naruto began to groan as if he was waking up, by then he was already on her small little boat with rocks tied to his ankles and waist. What's going on? He asked innocently. Kurinai screamed you're alive. Thank Kami, I thought I killed you. She then slapped her mouth as she had said too much, and now the blonde knew everything that had happened. Naruto thought about what he heard and spoke nicely. Don't worry I won't tell anyone. Kurinai sighed and relaxed a bit. That is, unless you teach me. Damn it. Kurinai cursed lie. Naruto began to chuckle a little bit, earning him a smile from Kurinai. I just got played. Naruto and Kurinai talked all the way back to land. They had plenty in common, they both trained harder than anyone else in their age group, they hate perverts, and they both like how distinguished their eyes are from everyone else's. Naruto tantalized Kurinai with action-packed adventures that revolved around as most know, Raymon. Kurinai has never tried Raymon before and the way Naruto described it, she didn't feel worthy of eating it. She began to hunger for it, she tried to hide it, but Naruto knew right away. Don't worry Kurinai-chan, I'll take you to Ichirakus for lunch after we train. AM suddenly burned her hand, and Sakura fell out of her bed, which made several materials, including her bedside hamper, fall on her heavily. He said as his trademark foxy grin then directed itself onto Kurinai, who blushed strongly. But Sakura. Ugh Sakura said as she brushed off all the stuff that fell on her, what a bad way to wake up she thought coldly. After a quick shower, she got dressed and began wondering what to do today. Hmm, maybe Sasuke would accept a date with me. She then remembered his holy branch and quickly said maybe next time what about Naruto. He would never reject me. Idiot idolizes me. Memories on how well he had gotten along with Haku and Hana filled her mind and her stomach turned upside down. Jealousy filled her with anger and concern. I need to find Naruto. She screamed in a hurry. It was barely 10 am, and she needed to find him as soon as possible. With am. Ouch. Am howled with pain after bandaging her burned hand. Guess this is karma for doing that to Naruto. She said sadly as she remembered how she treated him. Her jealousy got the best of her, and she hurt the one she loved. I need to apologize to Naruto. She said as she ran from the stand. With Kakashi. Huh? Finally. My time to talk since the beginning of chapter 2. 
Kakashi yelled melodramatically. I finally won't be a background character anymore he was caught off after the author started to shift his attention towards someone else. Wait please no. Don't leave me alone. Back with Kurenai and Naruto. Before they could begin training, Naruto mentioned the rock still tied to his body. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Kurenai chuckled nervously. Dust hold still Naruto. Ah Naruto. Kurenai laughed giddily, she hasn't laughed like this in several years, and it felt good to laugh like that again. Naruto had fallen onto his back as Kurenai removed the boulders on his ankles. Kurenai picked up the laughing Naruto and got on her knees to remove the boulder tied to his waist. Her face was completely red as she got close to his crotch. Naruto had his eyes closed, the boulders were cutting off circulation, and they began to hurt him. Kurenai succeeded in removing the rope, along with his pants. Leaving Naruto in his froggy boxers. She tried to stop her nose bleeding by getting the rope and trying to get rid of the knots with her teeth. Naruto didn't even notice his pants going down his knees and sighed happily. Ah. That feels great. Thank you Kurenai-chan. Kurenai still had the rope in between her teeth, and only garbled speech came out that sounded like my pleasure Naruto-kun. From their angle, they saw Naruto have Kurenai bend over as she took off his pants. Kurenai's hair had blocked her face as well as Naruto's crotch area, while well, Naruto looked happy throughout it all. When they heard Naruto say ah. That feels great. Thank you Kurenai-chan. They almost fainted, but when they heard Kurenai say something they couldn't understand, their rage kept them awake. Nu. Why Naruto? That should be me. Am was heartbroken. She turned away and saw pink everywhere. They hadn't even noticed each other. Am instantly recognized the person next to her. Sakura. The bane of my existence is the cruel girl that hurts and neglects poor Naruto, she doesn't even know how lucky she is. Am thought bitterly. Sakura was flabbergasted, her teammate, no, her friend was with some stranger. Oh so that's it huh, Naruto. Why do I feel like this? I like Sasuke-kun right? I don't know, do you? Or perhaps Naruto has given up on chasing you? You have neglected him since you were children. Inner Sakura shot back. Dust face it, he's grown on you, and seeing him showing that much attention to another girl is tearing you up inside. Just admit you're jealous. I am you, I know everything you know, I know your feelings better than you, don't deny this feeling. She continued. Sakura began to tear up as she remembered all the times she had hit him for the littlest things, all the neglect she had given him just because of Sasuke. Sakura stood up, shocking AM who Sakura still hasn't noticed, and began to walk away from Naruto until she heard Sakura. What are you doing here? It was Naruto, he sounded enthusiastic and began moving towards her, but nearly tripped when he noticed that his pants were between his legs. He didn't even bother using Chan this time Sakura thought sadly. He turned a bright red and asked nervously H how did these get down here? He laughed nervously until he saw Sakura's hand move in front of her. Just save it Naruto. She said as she began to walk away. After putting his pants up, Naruto sprinted next to Sakura and asked Sakura, Sakura flinched, what's wrong? Did I do something to upset you? He asked innocently and actually sounded depressed over his sad teammate. Before Sakura could say anything she got interrupted by someone. Dope, fight me right now. I don't know how you could have beaten Haku when I couldn't. Now we'll see who is stronger once and for all. It was Sasuke, he pointed his holy wooden sword towards and lunged at Naruto, before the blonde could say anything. Kurenai watched in amusement him, the Ichiha prodigy against Naruto-kun. This should be interesting. She thought with a smirk. Sweat dropped at this as she saw the wooden sword it looks like a goddamn children's toy. Sakura couldn't think straight, her inner self wouldn't let her. That's Sasuke what the hell. Naruto yelled as he dodged his lunge, the sword grazed him, and the splinters had cut into him deeply. There's no point anymore dope. With this sword that I made, I'll defeat anyone. Sasuke said smugly. Naruto glared at him. You were always one to be arrogant and had too much ego for your own good Sasuke team Naruto said as he gripped a kunai. Bring it on dope. Ahhhhh. Ah. Both screamed as they ran towards each other with their weapons in their hands, the mood was dark, and the skies began to darken suddenly. They were about five feet away from each other, closing in on probably the most intense battle that anybody will ever experience. Hearts were ing, and nobody could blink. They were about three feet away now, they both lunged at each other while screaming Sasuke. And Naruto. A centimeter away from each other, they swung their weapons at each other, while lightning struck behind them dramatically. Their epic showdown was interrupted by the sound of chirping birds, that noise. The same one from the bridge. Could it be? Naruto thought as his kunai got tossed away from Sasuke's sword. What the hell? Sasuke thought as he backed away from Naruto to look at the noise. Literally thousands of birds were going straight towards them, specifically, at Sasuke. There was a little bird who had its feathers pointed outwards, that looked identical to Sasuke's haircut. The tiny bird had one thought. Revenge. 
If attacking the boy would lead to the revenge of his family, so be it. For my family, for my species, for me. Revenge. The little bird thought as it led the charge of animals toward Sasuke. Naruto jumped out of the way as he saw Sasuke get swarmed by the birds holy shit. Naruto, Kurinai, AM, and Sakura thought simultaneously. Nobody else could hear it, but Sasuke was laughing like a maniac. I know you are testing me Kami. I shall not fail you. He was getting clawed and pecked at by the birds, but he put the pain away. Ain't got time to bleed Sasuke thought as he picked up the sword and funneled his chakra through the wood. He swung his sword as he dispelled the chakra out at the bird typhoon, effectively taking out a massive amount of the birds. The little bird, A.N. Help with coming up with a name for it. Please. Gave off a huge screech that made everyone grasp their ears, the birds fled and everything seemed to relax, that is, until Sasuke got tackled by a seven-foot bear and began to maul the Achiha, when several boars and tigers approached the mauling, along those animals, a tiny raccoon made its way into the fray. This raccoon had a strand of orange paper across its body. I finally found you, you bastard. You thought you could hide after killing my Achiha. Now we fight to the death. Kakashi screamed out after popping out of Kami knows where. The raccoon looked at Kakashi and began to glow in blue chakra as Kakashi prepared his hand for his signature dot. They both looked at each other for a split second before vanishing into the air. They reappeared atop of the trees, perfectly balanced on the tips of those huge branches. Lightning struck at both of them. Kakashi used his hand to absorb the electricity, while the raccoon absorbed the voltage through its fur. They both glowed blue with chakra lightning, and sparks flew from their bodies. The last showdown was about to begin. They looked at each other with bloodshot eyes, and the killing intent was so strong it killed the leaves and branches of the trees. This dot dot ends, now. Kakashi screamed out as his whole arm was flashing with power and electricity. Squeak squee aok. The raccoon hissed back. Tidori. Squeak squeak squee aok. Both of the combatants yelled as they both jumped at each other in slow motion, while everything else was at normal speed. Naruto, Kurinai, Sakura and AM looked at the epic fight between Kakashi and the raccoon and began to back away slowly before hauling it away from the area while screaming. Eru. The bear that was mauling Sasuke looked at the silver-haired ninja and the raccoon heading towards each other slowly. Before it could even move away, Sasuke's sword impaled itself into the bear's torso. HN. Sasuke smirked as he killed the mighty bear. He suddenly looked upwards and saw Kakashi inching his way towards a raccoon in the middle of the air, all in slow motion. But the Fu Sasuke got caught off after the two opponents made contact, which caused a humongous blue sphere to form around them and then blow up into a huge wave of energy that fell every single tree in the area and caused Sasuke to get pushed into a crater that got forced due to the pressure of the chakra. All the energy faded after three minutes, and all that remained was Kakashi and the raccoon falling head first towards the ground. Their bodies fell with a hard thud. They laid there motionless for several minutes, the feeling was quiet, and the dark sea as separated somewhat, which caused a halo of light to shine on them both. Kakashi twitched and started to crawl with his stomach towards the raccoon. The raccoon couldn't move as it saw the ninja crawl towards it slowly, how does he stay so strong? What motivates him? What makes him so strong? The raccoon thought with horror. Almost as if Kakashi read his mind he said Aicha was always there for me. It kept me away from all the horrors of my past. I shall not let you harm all that is important to me. He didn't stop crawling and was about a foot away from the raccoon until Sasu came and grabbed Kakashi by the side. Kakashi, it's over, you won. Just stop, you won. Sasuke said as he stopped Kakashi. Hey and Icha, is Icha okay? Kakashi said with strain as he couldn't stand all the pain. I am sure Icha is okay Kakashi. Sasuke said bewildered still thinking about his porn. D that's a relief. Kakashi said as he passed out. Sasuke looked at the raccoon while a black cat with purple markings on its face and a yellow-brown squirrel with four blotches of fur, spiking the back of its head, picked up the injured animal and began to flee. Sasuke merely shrugged as he thought huh, I wish I never have to go through that ever again. Foolish little boy. Back with Naruto. Naruto, Kurinai, Sakura and AM had stopped running when they reached the market district of Konoha and began to duck for cover when the huge explosion went off. Bam. That was an extremely unnecessary amount of brute force for a rodent. Naruto yelled as he dusted himself off. He offered his hand to pick up Kurinai, much to the dismay of AM and Sakura, their eyes evident with killing intent and jealousy. Kurinai picked up these signals almost immediately and tried to get up by herself, but something stopped her. Oh, come on Kurinai, you obviously like this little blonde dot they do too, hell the pink haired one actually has a bigger chance than you will ever have. They're the same age, you must be what? Eight years older? You need to show interest, now or never. Said a little Kurinai Chibi who popped up on her shoulder, she was wearing a head protector underneath little horns that stated love life. Aggressive. No, Kurinai-san. 
Naruto needs to take an interest in you first. These girls obviously like him too, don't go overboard and attempt to woo him right away said a little chibi that had a head protector that stated love life. Honesty before she got interrupted by the aggressive chibi. Aggressive chibi began to slap her across the face while saying listen to me. Being all honest isn't going to get her laid now is it? Do you want her to lose to those skanks? Hell no. She needs him, all of him. Understand. She held up a fist as she said the last word. Honesty Chibi cowered in fear and spoke out in nearly a whisper D don't lose to those girls no, those skanks, go get him girl. Both of them told Kurinai at the same time, using the exact tone. Kurinai snapped out of her little episode and grabbed Naruto's hand, she started to caress the hand smoothly before getting up. You're such a gentleman Naruto-kun, I really appreciate it. She added with a small flirtatious smirk as she really stressed the honorifics. This really fired up the girls into a rage that got extinguished as soon as Naruto reached his hands for them. No problem Kurinai-chan, what kind of person would let his friend sit on the floor? Naruto responded nonchalantly as he picked up both AM and Sakura. Kurinai brushed off the smug looks on both AM and Sakura and continued to talk with Naruto. So, Naruto-kun didn't you want to train and I could help you train if you wish. Kurinai said with a devilish smirk evident on her face. Damn it. She found his weakness. Both Sakura and AM thought simultaneously. Naruto's eyes lit up immensely yes. That's awesome. Of course I want to train. He yelled happily. Oh shit. Not like this, I have to leave now. Kurinai thought as she grabbed Naruto by the waist and teleported away with said blonde. What the hell. Both AM and Sakura screamed as they witnessed Kurinai take Naruto away. Yosh. That was an incredible amount of youth. Where do you think it came from Guy sensei I don't know Lee Kun, but we shall find him and recruit him into our cause. His youth will be most hopeful. Both of the green-clad, spandex-wearing, bushy eyebrows and bowl haircut ninjas disappeared. What the hell? Both AM and Sakura said again, but this time it was more confusing. But Naruto and Kurinai. Naruto was baffled, he was now in a totally different area. He had witnessed teleporting before but never experienced it before. He didn't even notice how much Kurinai's hands were basically massaging his stomach. He's so stunned ha, huh? I knew this would get to him Kurinai thought mischievously as her hands started to rub his body, slowly going downwards onto his groin. Almost there she thought as her blush filled her face, she felt a nosebleed coming soon. Naruto snapped out of his daze and jumped up, which caused Kurinai to panic and accidentally scratch Naruto across his chest. That was awesome Kurinai-chan. Can you please teach me how to do that? Naruto said heartily. The rubbing or the teleport. Kurinai was embarrassed. Wait, we should start with the first. That could help me in the future with battles. Kurinai chuckled and thought you sure are interesting, aren't you Naruto-kun? Several hours later. Naruto was panting, all the chakra, which seemed endless in the eyes of Kurinai, had taken its toll on poor Naruto. Damn, needs a lot of chakra control, that's for sure. Naruto said in between pants. Kurinai was shocked, six hours, and he's already mastered some techniques. Naruto-kun is certainly something else. Naruto laughed as he figured out how to truly do his now. The realization hit his face like a ton of bricks oh shit. I almost forgot about Hana-chan. Naruto stood up and came up next to Kurinai. She was about to speak but got interrupted as Naruto hugged her. His embrace warmed her dearly, she began to blush and tried to cling on to him as he backed away. He whispered to her sorry Kurinai-chan, but I need to go visit a friend right now. I'll see you tomorrow, is that okay? She nodded as if she was in a spell and got fully embraced by yet another warm bear hug. Goodbye Kurinai-chan, see you tomorrow. Naruto said before hightailing it towards Konoha. Kurinai began to feel weak, as if Naruto had given her strength. I, I think I might be an L love. Dot dot. But Sasuk. Sasuke was treating his wounds, pain was clearly noticeable on his face. That bear had given him the beating of a lifetime, but surprisingly Sasuk was actually okay with it. HN, I got too Y and let my guard down. I won't do that again, I swear to you Kami. Now it's time for me to spread the word of your greatness. He picked up several handmade pamphlets and headed for the door, every step hurting him, more and more. With Kakashi. Kakashi had just recently gotten to the hospital and was getting lectured by several doctors and nurses. He didn't care, all he wanted was his itcha. And he wanted it now. After losing his last book, he instantly went and bought another one after the memorial for his past book. The service had been surprisingly amazing, over 200 people, mostly men by the way, arrived for the funeral. Anoha sure had its share of perverts. He motioned the medical staff to leave and began going through his torn clothing and found his little book, scratched and semi-burned, but hell, it was still itcha. He opened his book and began giggling like a little girl until he felt something fall on his lap. 
It was a bird, with feathers that looked just like someone's hair could he knew. The bird stayed and began to glow, electricity began to come from it, but faded fast. The Kashi gaped at the bird, it's as if it wants to use the Chidori. The bird nodded as if it read Kakashi's mind. You're serious. Kakashi said almost in disbelief at the situation. The bird glared and Kakashi gulped. I can't get a break today can I? No Kakashi, you cannot get a break. But Naruto. Naruto was sprinting and judging the sun, it was 5 pm. I'm not that late. I'm sure she'll understand, right? At the Inuzuka vet office. Hana was impatient, she had waited for Naruto all day, since sunrise, through breakfast, through lunch, and now this. Where is he? Did he stand me up? I knew he was too good to be true. Hana thought broken hearted. She began to tear up and even considered cutting herself before thinking what the hell. PFFT, as if I would even think of doing that over a guy. She put the kunai down and looked at it again. And again she thought as she grabbed it. Before the self-destruction could begin, however, the door opened. Sorry, we are closed for the day. Hana said, not removing her eyes from the kunai. I'm sorry I'm late Hana-chan, I got caught up with training with Kurinuf. Hana glomped on Naruto while screaming. You had me so worried, I thought you weren't going to come today. Naruto chuckled I always keep my promises, Hana-chan. Dadabeo. Naruto talked with Hana about things that happened today, he said everything. Even about Kurinai, all the training they did. Hana knew about Kurinai the Jinjutsu mistress, her killing intent was focused on her image. With Kurinai. Kurinai was tending to her garden, she neglected her flowers due to being with Naruto all day. She was watering her roses until she noticed they began to die, along with the rest of her flowers. The temperature began to drop, her breath left a trace. Someone wanted her dead, right now. Back with Naruto. That red-eyed slut must have placed on him. That makes perfect sense. I need to find her, tomorrow hell is going to get her. I'll make sure of it. Hana thought demonically as she scooted Naruto out of her office and began to plot and write Kurinai's suicide note. That's right, suicide. Naruto was outside of the bed after Hana had scooted him outside as she began scheming something. Naruto shrugged it off as he began to go home. It had turned dark and the only night was the moon, Naruto loved nights like these, peaceful, cool, and moonful nights. He sensed something behind him, he turned and only saw a blur of darkness disappear, or so he thought. He was concentrated on his surroundings, his body tensed as he heard laughing Kukikuku Naruto attempted to run away before a set of hands began to surround him and constrict him. Kukikuku I have to stop laughing like him. He's out of my life, and he'll never bother me again. Anko thought as she began to smother the blonde until she felt a small pain on her arms. Ow. What the hell. Splinters. Anko winced as she unraveled her arms, and a log was there instead of Naruto. Naruto was running away as fast as he could, a demon had been choking him with a deadly grasp, and he barely managed to escape. He was terrified, his legs were skipping against the surface of the floor, with no signs of stopping anytime soon. He swore he heard a howl come from behind him, and realized that the streets were empty, completely empty. Jills began to form on his back as he heard rapid footsteps coming from behind him. He heard laughter and what seemed like a conversation, but Naruto just ran away before he heard any of it. The haha I can't believe you lost him, Anko-chan. Haha ha, you know the rules. My turn now. And Anbu said as she ran towards the terrified blonde. Anko cursed as she saw her best friend go after their prey of the month. Anko had established a monthly tradition of finding a candidate for her experiments. Yes, experiments nothing else. They would find somebody on the street, gender wasn't important, and they would go missing for the next two days. They never seemed the same and walked as if sore for some reason. They dubbed it the hunt and have been happening for three months as it is. They also had a bingo book for high targets with bets. The higher the person was in the scale, the bigger the bet. Naruto, surprisingly, was really high up the list, those who could tame the beast would gain a whopping 18,900 Ryo. The Kashi was also in the high list but could never be found whenever the hunt was on. They tried to lure him out of his house by holding every single edition of Icha Icha ever made on his doorstep while chanting read us Kakashi you know you want to. The willpower he showed would make the past Hokages proud and envious. He plugged his ears with wax and curled up in his bathtub in a fetal position while reciting it's not worth it over and over again. They had given up on Kakashi and moved on to the other men. Except for Guy of course, he would venture outside in the middle of the night every night and tried to prove his power by stripping in front of the women. They never looked at him at all. Back with Naruto. Naruto was running as he heard several people running after him, he felt greed-filled eyes staring at him. The village stopped beating me up several years ago. What did I do? Naruto thought sadly. He increased his speed and couldn't hear the footsteps anymore but didn't stop running. Oof. Naruto collided with someone and he instantly knew who it was. Hello Niko-san. Thank Kami you're here. 
there are several people after me for some reason. Anbu began to take off her mask, her purple hair went down to her shoulders, and the moonlight made the purple strands illuminate from the darkness. Um san Naruto noticed her hair stand out, and he has never seen her face before until today. Huh, she's really pretty. Was Naruto's only thought that crossed his mind. Naruto was about to speak again, but he got interrupted by a lone finger. The finger touched him delicately as she spoke with a slight purr. Please Naruto-kun, call me Yuga-chan I'll take care of you, Yuga said as a smirk rose from her dot, she grasped Naruto and pulled him into a tight hug. She squeezed hard and began to suffocate Naruto with her um assets. This was her plan, tease him until he begs for more. Naruto was having trouble breathing, he remembered the demon from before, and a light bulb turned on above his head, he tried to escape, but despite all the effort he couldn't break the grasp. Yugao was drooling at the feeling Naruto gave her, her nose began to bleed and knew she would win the bet, but something didn't feel right unknown feelings became known, she had been assigned to be Naruto's bodyguard in the shadows by the Hokage, since he turned 4 years old. At first she hated him, just because of the demon sealed inside him. The more time she spent with him, she began to feel horrible about how the village treated him. He would always cry at his little apartment with nobody comforting him. She knew he longed for a friend and would always ask for his mother. She eventually began to love Naruto, as a son at first, but his determination and his happy-go-lucky attitude made her secretly like him more than that. By the time he was 8 she was 14. They had first met when some villagers began to attack him on his birthday, they became acquainted and became associates. That's what she had told him. She couldn't reveal herself as his bodyguard, as much as she wanted to become friends with him, she couldn't. Her grip relaxed and Naruto began to squirm away from her. He looked at her with concern until she snapped out of her thoughts and motioned for Naruto to come closer. Naruto reluctantly agreed as he inched himself closer to the Anbu. She looked at him, he's 12, I'm 18 not that distant right? Wait that pink-haired girl, Sakura Haruno that's the girl he likes she thought sadly. When Naruto got close enough she grabbed his hand and began to caress it. She liked the feeling of his hand and longed to hold it in hers. He's only interested in that pink-haired girl that only hurts him. He'll always stay loyal to her. I want to hold his hand, it's an urge no one need. Yugao thought as she began to tear up. No matter how many times he got knocked down, he would get up and brush it off. He always had a fake smile, just to hide the depression he was always in. He didn't let the hatred of the village hinder his dreams, Yugao was always near him, experiencing everything he did, and was amazed at how strong and good-hearted he was, this led Yugao to unknowingly fall in love with a little blonde idiot. Naruto was getting soothed by Yugao's hand, and he liked the feeling, understanding, not pity. He noticed the tears in her eyes and wiped them away, he hated when people cried, and nobody did anything to help. He went through that and absolutely hated the feeling. Nico I mean Yugao-chan what's wrong? Did I do something to offend you? He asked with the most caring look in the world that ended with Yugao hugging Naruto, while crying her eyes out on his shirt. Naruto was taken aback by her sudden action, but decided to embrace her and began to rub her shoulders in a comforting manner. Naruto didn't even realize that he wasn't even in the street anymore. He was in a house, sitting down on the couch with Yuga crying on him. How they got there was unimportant because all of his attention was on the purple-haired Anbu. This feels great, he's comforting me, and his body is so warm. Why can't he see that Pinkette bitch is a lost cause and forget about her? His attention should be directed toward someone who will care for him, someone licking Yuga thought sadly. She felt a lot better in his arms and decided that it was time for him to realize her feelings. Naruto-kun, I need to tell you something. She spoke slowly. Naruto looked at her facial expressions and decided to let go of her, but she didn't let go. Naruto was surprised but decided to let go later. Yes, you got Chan. He said softly. Her heart raced and she began to quiver. No I can't do it. His heart is set for Sakura, he will never accept me, and his loyalty to that pink-haired burden knows no bounds. It's now or never she thought before she spoke out about Naruto kun I love she was caught off guard by someone who entered the room. Well well well, look at what we have here. Way to go you got Chan, you win the bet, and you manage to keep him here for me too. You're so thoughtful. Anko said as she eyed her best friend holding on to Naruto like if he was her lifeline. Naruto looked at the lady who was speaking at Yugao. The lady gave off a strange vibe that gave Naruto chills, she was undressing him with her eyes, and Naruto could tell right away she was somebody to be afraid of. Yugao stood up and got in front of Anko. Anko-chan can I talk to you for a moment? She said angrily as she realized what Anko meant. She dragged Anko into the kitchen, and her angry eyes bore into her. Anko noticed her facial expressions and noticed anger and jealousy. Anko wasn't part of the interrogation squad for nothing, mind you. Yugao, you can't be serious, please tell me you aren't. Anko said with an unbelievable tone. Yugao nodded fiercely as Anko pondered a new plan. She moved away from Yugao and approached a sitting Naruto. 
Naruto stood upwards and began to backtrack as she came closer and closer. His back hit a wall and he began to tremble. Anko was in front of him, she put her hands around Naruto's head and leaned in closely she whispered something and then away. I'll be back for you, Naruto-kun was the only thing Naruto heard from Anko before she away. He looked forward and saw a smiling Yuga staring at him with great interest. Naruto-kun, I don't want to spend the night alone, can you stay with me tonight? She said with a huge blush on her face, the trap had been set. Naruto shrugged as he thought it was just because she felt weak and alone. Sure you got Chan, after what happened just now I won't leave you. And besides, I do not want to be outside right now. He replied with his usual foxy grin. But Sasuke. Sasuke was trudging home semi-content on what accomplished today, not only had he fraught hundreds of animals, he had also given a speech about how great Kami is, and how people should bow down before their god. He mentioned what Kami had given him and the powers it possessed. His speeches brought dozens of people towards him, they were all listening with admiration. Sasuke had the ability to convince people with his words, he moved his hands fluently with power, and his voice got stronger as he continued with his speech. Hundreds of people ended up going to his speech, and they all cheered as Sasuke passed the pamphlets left and right, up and down and all around town. Sasuke wasn't showing arrogance as much anymore, he believed the Kami had punished him by allowing the animals to have a field day with his body. He thought ahead even more so, and revenge was the last thing on his mind. Truly, Sasuke was not corrupted with his power-hungry ambitions as before, his holy weapon, who he called with affection Tenshi no Imnatefk, Angelic Typhoon, was all that he needed to win. Sasuke then remembered how suddenly everyone left when the sun began to go down. He heard giggling, he turned and saw nobody. The hairs on the back of his head stood up and began to get into a defensive position. He calmed himself down and closed his eyes. There's people at 6 o'clock and 12 o'clock. Unknown rank and closing, females surrounding my area. Sasuke thought as the group of Kanoichi made their way onto the last of the Achea. Nu oh somebody help me. Sasuke yelled as he was glumped from every direction. People heard him from the safety of their homes and muttered that Kami would protect him before returning back to the pamphlets that they received. Sasuke left his sword at home, he thought he wouldn't need it. He was wrong, and he was paying for it. Back with Naruto. Naruto was in the middle of putting a pillow on the couch as he prepared for bed before Yugao walked in and scoffed. Naruto-kun what are you doing? You're not going to sleep on the couch. She ended her sentence with a pout. Naruto then looked down as if he died a little bit inside. Oh I'm sorry Yugao-chan. He then put the pillow down onto the ground along with a blanket and slept on the ground. Yugao gasped as she saw him do this, her eyes began to release tears and knelt down next to Naruto. Idiot. I should have known it was too good to be true. It's a miracle if somebody actually let me stay at their house, I should have known that the ground was the only place where I belong. Naruto scolded himself as he buried his face on the pillow. Yugao was crying as she sat next to him, that's not what I meant Naruto-kun. I'm sorry. She was about to speak to Naruto, but she got stopped by a huge scream. Nu oh somebody help me. Naruto and Yugao both got up and looked at the window. That voice. It's Asuk. Naruto thought as he ran outside, completely ignoring Yugao's attempts to make him stop. Naruto ran towards Sasuke and gasped as he saw him. He was in the middle of a tug-of-war game, with Sasuke being the rope. All the Kanoichi were pulling at Sasuke, and Naruto swore he heard skin getting ripped off. Hey, what the hell are you doing to him? Naruto yelled which got the attention of the Kanoichi. They dropped Sasuke and evil eyes stared at Naruto. The temperature dropped by several degrees as the group of ninja began to close up on Naruto. The blonde began to move his hands into Seal's cage no bunch and jutsu. Suddenly there were three Naruto's rushing at the Kanoichi, while the real one carried Sasuke away from the mob. Sasuke was torn up and had scratches and bruises all over his chest. All he remembered was Naruto saving him from the ninjas. T thank you Naruto he said before he passed out. Naruto chuckled as he headed towards the Achiha district. He placed Sasuke in one of the bedrooms and then went back to Yugao. His clones had been destroyed and all the memories came back at him. His nose began to bleed a lot. Naruto made it back to Yugao's apartment with a very bloody shirt, Yugao was worried, but Naruto made her disregard the shirt. Before Naruto could get back onto the ground, Yugao had tossed him onto her bed and told him to stay there, or she would let the Kanoichi get him. She lied obviously, but Naruto didn't know that. He stayed on the bed, his back was to Yugao, and she didn't like that. Naruto had fallen asleep several minutes after he got forced on the bed and was having a nice dream about Raymond, specifically Raymond getting eaten by Naruto and his new friends, Haku, Hana, Kurinai, and Yugao. AM was cooking the Raymond while they all talked about how much they loved Raymond. It was the best dream he ever had and wouldn't let it end soon. Yugao had devised a plan to get Naruto to turn over. She would get the covers he was using and pull them tight for him to turn his direction. 
When she did it, it worked far better than she would have ever expected. When he turned, his hand had gotten flung towards her, and his index finger landed in her mouth. Liu Gao was way too excited to notice that Naruto was asleep and believed that he did it on purpose. Liu Gao began suckling on his finger as she eyed his expression, and she blushed furiously. He looked extremely happy, and he began to drool with his eyes closed. She didn't stop suckling on his finger and was actually really happy. Maybe this is it. Maybe now he likes me more than that pink-haired bitch. She thought happily. In Naruto's dream. Naruto was still at Ichiraku's, eating his favorite food with his friends. He loved the feeling of being with friends and Raymond made it better. He was currently checking the temperature of the brand new Raymond that AM delivered him. He had made the dreaded mistake of eating his Raymond when it was still boiling hot, he still loved it, but his face didn't. He dipped his index finger into the Raymond and then put it on his mouth, still too hot. He was sucking on his finger for it to cool down, but couldn't take it out anymore. His finger wouldn't budge no matter how many times he moved it. With Yu Gao. Yu Gao was in heaven, Naruto began to move his finger and tried to move it away, but her tongue didn't let him. His finger began to explore her mouth, basically massaging her tongue, which Yu Gao thought was impossible, but loved the feeling. She had begun to caress his hand before falling asleep with his finger still in her mouth. In the morning. Naruto awoke from possibly the best dream he had ever gotten, regardless that his index finger stayed in his mouth through most of it. He yawned but realized something strange, his finger was wet, and Yu Gao was reaching for something that was there before. His mind put the two thoughts together and he began to hyperventilate. Naruto had seen Yu Gao mad, but that was when he was smaller. He couldn't forget the faces of the people who began to beat him up after she was done with them. Naruto was about to jump out of bed, but a lone hand found his collar, and a sigh of relief came from the still sleeping Yu Gao as she reeled Naruto into her grasp. Her hand searched desperately for his, and when she found one she dragged it over to her face and opened her mouth for some reason. Naruto was shocked and really embarrassed by his position. Yu Gao had grabbed Naruto's right hand with her left, which meant Naruto was twisted with his right arm under his body, while his left arm was underneath Yu Gao. Yu Gao Chan sure is grabby when she's asleep Naruto thought as he sweat dropped. With Kakashi. Again. We will not stop until you fully get this, understand. Kakashi said sternly. Habari, A.N. Thank you Granisaber Master for giving me the name idea, had been training with Kakashi since he got released from the hospital and had gotten two-thirds of the Chidori almost complete. Kakashi had given the bird a name, and he named it after one of the characters of Icha. A.N. I had to have a reason for his name, Hibari was amazing, he finished several steps of the Chidori that took Kakashi weeks to learn. This bird is going to be legendary one day Kakashi thought as he saw Hibari glow with chakra that turned into electricity. I'll get my revenge, so soon I can taste it Hibari thought evilly as he pictured Sasuke dying. It was morning in Kanoha, the birds were chirping, people began to bustle out into the streets, everything was calm. Except for Naruto of course, he was terrified with his little situation. Yuga was still asleep while holding his hand dangerously close to her chest, and her constant muttering and twisting did not help Naruto. He knew how Yuga was when she was mad, and she also hated perverts with a passion and in Naruto's predicament, he looked like a huge pervert. With all of Yuga's twists and turns, he ended up with his right hand over her shoulder near her face, while his left hand was still underneath her, dangerously close to her bottom. Naruto's torso was touching her back, while he made sure his lower half was as far away as possible. Naruto could almost cry when he thought of the beatings he would receive when Yuga would wake up. Naruto needed a plan, he knew she would wake up soon, and he knew she would kill him if he didn't move. Naruto began to think of a way out of his predicament that's good, all I need is some sort of pulley system, and a block of cheese Naruto thought anxiously, as his plan made complete sense, and in no way could possibly fail. Naruto was proud of his thinking and decided to activate the plan now. That is until Yuga let go of his hand and turned around, facing him. Naruto froze, time seemed to slow down to a crawl. Yuga was still asleep and was about a centimeter away from Naruto's face. Naruto still had his hand over her, he dared not move. Naruto slowly began to rise from his lying down position into a crouching one, he couldn't move while his hand was still underneath her body. He was going to wing it, raise her up and run away as fast as he could. Naruto inched his hand away from her bottom and slowly started to raise her upwards. Naruto was concentrating too hard to notice the small smirk on her face as he lifted her. You won't get away from me that easily Naruto-kun, you have to work if you want to leave Yuga thought evilly. Naruto was just about to free his hand until the worst possible thing could have happened to him, she rolled into his grasp and grabbed his stomach and snuggled her head around his chest. Naruto's mouth was hanging as he screamed inside K Kami-sama. Do you hate me? Do you like seeing me get hurt? Does this amuse you? Naruto was on the verge of tears as he stared at the sky and believed that it was going to be the last time he would ever see it. 
Liu Gao was cheering inside as her plan had worked to perfection as she was now being held with his arms, it was somewhat against his will, but she didn't care. Naruto began to think until he said and thought at the same time. Yu Gao blushed deeply and almost gasped at his sudden reaction. Too many thoughts were crossing her mind. A already? I don't believe it. She thought as she began to blush and felt a trickle of blood slip out of her nose. Naruto decided he wanted to live another day, and his plan B came into effect. He rolled forward with Yu Gao, mid-roll he relaxed his arms which dropped her gently on the bed, and he jumped away out of the open window. H how the? Yu Gao thought as she got up from her position and saw Naruto running on the rooftops of buildings. He's just shy about what happened I bet she thought as she began to dress herself. Naruto was running at top speed before feeling hunger came at him strongly, he hadn't eaten in what seemed like days and changed his course towards Ichirakus. He jumped down towards the floor and began to walk, he would have fainted if he even ran several more feet. He was trudging through the city until he heard someone call his name, worst of all, it was a voice that sent chills down his back. He turned around and his fear turned out to be true. It was Anko and she was running towards him with a weird smile. Do you want to get something to eat? I'll buy it. She said with a smirk. Naruto began to shake his head as he held his hands in front of him, as he nervously said and no thank you, I'm not really hungry, his stomach began to growl lie, which made several people look around at what caused the noise. Naruto hung his head in defeat, while Anko laughed a little as she began to run her fingers in his head. Come on brat, let's get some dango. She said as she fed her dot. Naruto didn't like dango that much, but he knew that look, mouth watering, stars in the eyes, sweat from anticipation for the food they loved, he wouldn't dare say anything about her favorite food, as he knew how it felt for that to happen. Yay yeah, sure, sounds good. You lead the way. Naruto said as he gave her one of his legendary foxy smiles. Anko nodded as she began to walk forward. The brat's okay, I do not see why Yuga would like him so much. I might as well get to know him. Anko thought as they finally arrived at one of her favorite restaurants in Kanoha. Well, here we are. She said happily as she and Naruto eyed a stand that looked surprisingly like Ichirakus. I'm familiar. Naruto thought as he sat down on one of the stools next to Anko. Ah welcome back Anko, who's your friend here? Said a lady in her fifties as she pointed a finger at Naruto, don't worry about it granny. Amaya kun you make the usual. Anko said as a boy who looked like he was 19 came outside of the kitchen. Sure thing Anko Nichin said Amaya as he went back inside. This is kind of weird Naruto thought as he saw Amaya. Naruto shrugged the feeling away and began to chat with Anko. They were having a heated debate that would shatter the hearts and minds of those weaker than them. Listen here brat. There is no way in hell that Dango would ever lose to Raymond. Its food was sent from Kami herself. Anko yelled out angrily as Naruto shook his head slowly with a small smirk. Poor, poor, delusional Anko Raymond is the best food ever created and will never be beaten. And I agree Dango was sent from Kami, she couldn't stand the smell and taste of it up in heaven and decided to punish us for it. Naruto finished with a victorious smile as Anko gasped at how hardcore Naruto was. But Sasuke. Sasuke jumped out of his bed when he felt something off in the distance. Somebody is using Kami's name in vain. Sasuke yelled out in a terrified tone as he tucked his weapon into his holster, he then began to run towards the weird feeling. Back to Naruto. Ahem the old lady interrupted as she looked at Naruto with an angry glare. Naruto gulped and sweat dropped at her expression. Imaya was glowing with anger as he heard the food he helped his mother with every day get insulted like that. He went up to the blonde boy and raised a fist that was white with power and was about to strike the boy down until a hand stopped his fist and began to crush it. Imaya we meet again a voice growled with pure hatred. Imaya chuckled evilly, so we have nice to see you again am. They both looked at each other with intense anger. Naruto and Anko were confused, they were kidding around with each other with the insults, and now this happened. There was another stare down going across the stand, Tucci the old lady growled as she looked at her long-time rival. Hag Tucci replied with the same amount of hatred in his voice. The tension was high, and all four of the proud restaurant owner's workers yelled out, we shall have a contest to prove ours is better. A.M. and Tucci both grabbed Naruto and sat him down on one end of a picnic table, while Lamaya and his mother grabbed Anko and sat her in front of Naruto. They were about to protest until they smelled their favorite food cooking. They forgot about everything that was happening and just wanted to eat. You will not stop eating, understand. Both of them heard as their plates were soon covered with food. No questions asked, they began to eat plate upon plate of Raymond, Naruto, and Dango, Anko. Bowls after bowls were being emptied while plates after plates were emptied also. Anko and Naruto were in absolute bliss, they didn't stop eating, and the food wouldn't stop coming as they inhaled it all with gusto. If Anko can make this happen, then I don't care for the weird vibe she gives off. She's freaking awesome. Naruto thought happily as he ate his 48th bowl of ramen. This boy must be a gift of good luck or something. Yugao, you better watch out. 
if he can make this happen, then our deals are off. He's mine. Anko thought as she ate her 356 stick of Dango, an. Dango is pretty small compared to Raymond so yay, don't think Naruto is getting beat here. Naruto had a huge mountain of bulls, while Anko had a humongous pile of sticks, and Tucci and AM hadn't even broken a sweat yet. Amaya and his mother were the same way as well. People had begun to gather around them and began to look at the contest, they completely forgot that both Anko and Naruto were the most hated ninja in the village. Over an hour has passed and they have not stopped for anything. There were several hundred people looking at the eating ninjas. Among those people were Kurunai, Hana, Sakura, and Yugao. They were amazed at the sight of bowls and sticks and yelled out simultaneously go Naruto kun. Beat her ass. You can do it. The women, except for Sakura, stopped and looked at each other. Their eyes steeled when they saw each other, and hateful thoughts poured into their heads. Especially for Hana, her hatred of Kurunai was strong after she heard what Naruto said. All of the killing intent made several adults run away from them, while several birds dropped dead from the sky. With Kakashi and Habari. The Bari gasped as he evaded a kick from Kakashi my kind something happened to my species. Habari thought before he began to speed off towards the city. Hey, where do you think you're going? We aren't done yet. Kakashi screamed as he followed Habari towards the village. Back with Naruto. Naruto and Anko were still eating happily, while Kurunai, Yugao, and Hana stared at each other with hatred, well to be fair, only Hana and Kurunai were doing that, while Yugao gave death glares at Sakura. Sakura felt the sting of her eyes on her back and turned to see Yugao giving her the most hateful look she has ever received. What's with you? Why are you looking at me like that? Sakura said angrily. Yugao scowled as she said, you don't know what luxury you have until it's gone pinky, remember that he won't be there for you for much longer. Yugao began to walk and all Sakura could say was what the hell are you talking about? Angrily. Yugao flinched and turned around and came face to face with a dot, you don't even know what it's like for him to not even notice you huh? Get used to it now, all this time he's liked you even after you torture him. Don't worry, he won't bother you again. He's mine. Yugao ended with a demonic tone. What was that? Both Kurunai and Hana yelled at the same time and jumped at Yugao who was startled by their voices. Sakura just stood there and took in what the purple-haired lady had said to her. Is this like with AM and Kurunai and Hana? Just what the hell are you doing Naruto? Sakura thought before a deep voice was heard. What are you people doing? Don't ever use Kami's name in vain. Sasuke said and then began to say a long-winded speech on how Kami should be praised and how it helps with life and how differences should be overlooked and combined to make harmony. When Sasuke said that AM, Imanya, Tuchi and the old lady began to tear up and they began to shake hands. We should combine our restaurants to make this unnecessary fighting stop. Tucci said with tears in his eyes. They all agreed and began talking about business opportunities while they walked away. Hey where are you guys going? Anko and Naruto said in agony as they ran out of food. Both of them sighed as they got up and patted their bellies as they walked away together chatting things up. Sasuke was getting the crowd all riled up as he continued his speech without losing a beat. He was actually glad he was spreading the good news about Kami. Sasuke heard the noise of birds and immediately pulled out Tenshi no Imnatefk and aimed it at the noise. Sasuke gaped as he saw the same little bird from the day before and he said so meet again, Hibari was already charging up the Chidori and speeding towards Sasuke. Hibari, don't do it. Kakashi ran after him. Sasuke began channeling his chakra into his wooden blade and it began to glow bright white. People began to run away as they saw impending disaster as the two combatants closed in on each other. Die. Sasuke yelled as he swung his chakra-filled blade towards Hibari. The two fighters were about to contact each other until Kakashi intervened by catching Hibari and kicking Sasuke's sword away. I don't know why you two hate each other, but I want this to stop. Both of you will be working on the same team so calm it down. Understood. Kakashi said seriously. Hibari just flew away without saying anything, I don't promise anything. He thought as he headed for Kakashi's house. Sasuke said fine, I understand. That shocked Kakashi, he would have normally said something hateful, but not now. Gurunai was exhausted and so was her opponent. Hana was furious. Listen red-eyed skank. Get Naruto kun away from your dot he's mine. She screamed. Kurunai flinched but replied back, you must be crazy. He would never like someone like you. She slapped Hana with the back of her hand. Yugao was tied up with rope and her mouth was taped up. She quickly untied herself thanks to her Anbu knowledge. She then realized that Naruto had left the area. Where did Naruto Kun go? She asked worriedly. Realization hit them like a brick wall. He's with Anko. They all said as they ran after him. Along the borders of Fire Country. Why does Kanoha have to be so far away? Screw Kiri. They can't stand people like me. I know Kanoha appreciates bloodlines, maybe they let me stay. Maybe a red-headed girl thought as she ran towards Kanoha. 
but Anko and Naruto. Both ninjas had made their way onto a training field by a lake as they began to talk. Wow Anko-chan, I didn't expect for someone like you to be able to eat that much food. You were amazing. Naruto said as he began skipping rocks across the water's surface. Anko would have blushed at the added suffix, but managed to keep it concealed as she replied nicely thanks Brad. You were pretty good as well. That was a lot of Raymond though, how do you manage to keep in shape Anko lifted his shirt and began to feel it. She was surprised at how well toned his body was, and she began to explore his body. Anko-chan. What are you doing? Naruto said as he laughed from her touch. Anko was truly interested in the boy, she liked him, but she had to know if he would accept her. Naruto-kun, I need to say something. She said as she got up and closed her hands. Naruto knew she was being serious so he paid attention. Several years ago, I left Konoha with my sensei. He was a traitor and I didn't even know. To make a horrible story short, he marked me with this curse mark. People hate me because I would defend him back then. I just need to know if you're comfortable with me when you know about this. She ended with a sad look. Naruto got up and did something he had learned over the past couple of days. Hugs can't make problems go away, but they can sure make you feel better. He hugged her and said I have already met the Rilanko, smart, brash, competitive and nice. Not some horrible monster. I can't help what happened in the past, and I will certainly not judge you because of what you have. You must already know of the Kyubi sealed inside me, and yet you still talk to me like I'm an ordinary person. I know how it feels to be hated for something you can't help. Naruto spoke as he released the hug, only for her to embrace him deeper. Anko almost had tears in her eyes as she held the boy in her hands. He doesn't care for the curse mark. Sorry Yugao, but I will not let you have him. Anko thought with extreme happiness as Naruto grinned. He had helped his new friend to feel better and he felt great. Yugao, Hana and Kurenai had arrived at the training field to see Anko hugging the blonde and they felt all their hope die down inside. Whenever Anko has her eyes on a guy, she gets him. Before they left, however, Naruto spoke out Yuga-chan, Kurenai-chan, Hana-chan, what are you guys doing here? Anko wanted to slap her forehead as she saw the other Kanoichi's face lit up when they heard their names. She shrugged it off as she thought competition makes things like these so much fun. Naruto and his new friends began to talk, well they individually talked to him, until the night was brought upon them. They said they had to go home and looked at Naruto as if they were expecting something. After three awkward minutes of just standing there waiting, Naruto said let me walk you ladies back. All of the girls sighed as they were about to leave until they heard four poofs they looked and saw five Naruto standing there. Clones, get my friends to their home safely, got it. Naruto said and gotta you know it, boss. From them. The girls deadpanned and were going to say something, but Naruto spoke first. I'm sorry girls, I need to think right now. Naruto said in an almost whispered voice. When he had spoken he didn't turn from his position, he was perched on a rock as he viewed the full moon over him. The way Naruto looked wanted to make the girls scream with glee as they saw him in a romantic light. The clones coughed and the ladies began to walk away as the real Naruto began to get into a deep trance. Around midnight. Naruto was still looking at the moon, his clones had safely led his friends back home hours ago, and he felt something inside his body he hadn't felt since the incident at the bridge. Naruto felt a small amount of pain in his forehead increase into something much more painful. Before he could scream with pain he blacked out. Mindscape. Naruto opened his eyes and realized he was in what seemed like a large sewer system. He began to walk around aimlessly until he saw a huge gate with a piece of paper on it. Naruto approached the gate and began to feel immense power emanating from it. What he saw was something completely different. It was a woman behind the bars. She had long red hair that reached her waist with incredible ruby eyes that surpassed Kurenai's by a long shot. She wasn't wearing any clothes, but her hair had covered most of her whatnot and had very tanned skin. Naruto couldn't help but blush at the sight of the woman in front of him. She grabbed onto the bars but released them when smoke arose from her hands. Why, hello Naruto. It's about time we get to meet face to face don't you think? She spoke out with the most angelic voice Naruto had ever heard. Naruto's trance was broken as he saw tails appear from behind. Naruto gasped as he saw the gate begin to open. Do not worry, I will not escape, because if I try, we both die. She said casually as Naruto began to panic and hyperventilate. The woman approached the shocked blonde and began to hug him to soothe his nerves. Naruto began to feel safe in her arms which surprised him. He already knew that she was the Kayubi, but he somehow felt comfortable. My name is not Kayubi by the way. It is my title, not my name. My name is she stopped and began to think of a name, as she did not want to be called the name that everyone knows as a monster. She remembered one and used it in Kashina. Dot, she said with a smile. Naruto looked at her before he realized something and backed off. Put some clothes on. He yelled as he looked away, he threw his jacket towards her, and she looked at him with a confused look that turned into semi-anger. Did he just reject me? 
nobody rejects me. It's those women that he spends all his time with. I will not accept this she thought angrily as she put on his jacket. An idea popped into her head and she loved it. Naruto-kun can I ask for a favor? Please. She asked and she held out the last word as innocently as she could. Naruto bought it without thinking. Sure, Kashina-san, what do you need? Kashina began to smile evilly as she thought of the things she'll be able to do. Kashina began to explain a method on how she can be freed from her prison. Naruto was skeptical at first, but Kashina said, and here I thought you didn't like it when people were sad, she even added tears for good measure. Naruto apologized a hundred times and did what she asked. Outside of the mindscape. Naruto opened his eyes and began the hand signs for the cage bunch and no jutsu. He made one appear, and the clone used a hinge and transformed into Kashina. Naruto walked up to his clone and began to channel his chakra into his clone's forehead. Naruto had pumped in a lot of chakra into the clone and then tapped her forehead with his finger. The clone went limp and fell down. A minute passed and the clone got up. She started to pop her joints and said it's good to be outside. Kashina was happy that she was outside but had a little mission. And it involved Naruto's new friends. Naruto looked surprised as he saw Kashina stretch her muscles until he threw his jumpsuit at her. Put some clothes on. Naruto said as he turned around while Kashina gaped angrily. You dare reject me? You shall feel hell beyond your biggest fears. She stopped as she looked at Naruto's curled up form cowering with fear. Naruto was terrified beyond belief as he felt a massive amount of killing intent radiating from the woman behind him. Kashina realized what she had done and instantly began to comfort Naruto. As soon as she touched his shoulder he flinched and tried to run away. Kashina grabbed onto his wrist as he screamed fiercely don't kill me. Naruto was trying to free himself but to his dismay, Kashina held on tighter and forced a massive bear hug. This is it. This is where I die. Naruto thought as he awaited his spine to be crushed, but it never came. A hand found itself in his hair and began to move around tenderly. Naruto was confused as his eyes were wide open with fear. Why is she doing this? As she liked to make her victims relax. Naruto thought as he began to shiver with goosebumps as he heard her say shh don't worry Naruto kun I'm sorry for yelling at you. I didn't mean to do that, okay. She whispered as she caressed his head lovingly. Naruto could feel the tender affection he was receiving from Kashina and felt loved. Love like a kid would feel from his mother. Naruto had never felt this before and couldn't understand it, she was a demon, but she had given him these feelings. Naruto returned the hug as Kashina smiled and continued to caress his face. Naruto was in deep thought is this how it feels to have a mother? I like this feeling. I don't want this feeling to end. Kashina looked at Naruto with filled eyes, but was surprised at why she hadn't jumped on Naruto, yet I'll get to him right now. This feeling in my stomach, I haven't felt this before I do not want it to end she thought kindly as she began to embrace Naruto even more. Naruto-kun, have you ever felt this way before? She asked as she broke the hug but made sure Naruto stayed close by. No I have not, Kashina-sama Naruto answered. Sama. What's with that? Kashina thought as she stared at him with confusion. Naruto was feeling strange, this woman who he had just met made him feel loved for the first time in his life. She was a demon, not just any other demon, but the one that had made his life a living hell. He wasn't mad at her, he felt a strong connection with her and felt obliged to make her feel happy. Kashina liked her vassal more than she thought possible. She then remembered her little mission. Naruto Kun H how do you feel about your new friends? She stuttered as she was worried about the answer she would get from him. Naruto looked at her with a strange look on his face, as he said slowly w well they have become my friends so quickly, and I know they became part of my special people, I'll always be there for them, even if they hate me, Kashina looked surprised, and got a sudden appearance of sadness. Hey and what about me, how do you feel towards me? Naruto gulped and sighed as he looked at the floor. Why you made my life horrible from the beginning, you are the reason everyone hates me, Kashina wanted to dispel the and re-enter his mindscape again, but Naruto continued to talk, I know if it wasn't because of you. I would be dead by now when I was fighting Haku you also didn't ask for what happened to you, and I can't possibly hate someone for something like that you for some reason make me feel happy to be alive, like I have a purpose. Naruto looked downwards as he realized what he had said. In fact he wasn't even sure why he had even said it. He knew it wasn't a lie, but he wouldn't have said it like that. Ashina smiled as she realized she had some control over him, barely enough to say what he truly felt, but it was something. She felt the need to protect him and felt as if it had something to do with her past vassal. Ashina smirked as she grabbed onto his cheeks and began to play with them. Naruto believed this was how it felt to have a mother, protecting, heartfelt moments and loving tenderness. Kashina pulled Naruto into a tight hug once again as she into Naruto's apartment. Naruto already knew what had happened and was about to ask how she knew how to do that, but remembered the fact that being the most powerful demon must mean something. Naruto wanted to talk to her some more, but she put him to bed as she lay next to him. You need your rest Naruto-kun. 
Now go to sleep. Kashina said happily as she looked at Naruto nodding as he closed his eyes. What the hell am I doing? This isn't how I act. What is going on? Kashina thought as she sat up and began to meditate. Mindscape. Kayubi, A.N. In the mindscape she'll be referred to as Kayubi while on the outside she'll be known as Kashina, walked towards her previous jail cell and shuddered when she remembered how lonely it was in there. She was going to turn around, but she heard a voice. The voice was one of a woman, a woman who Kayubi remembered faintly. Kayubi, what do you think you're doing with my son? Kayubi thought as she heard and realized who it was. Oh Kashina, long time no see. What are you up to? Kayubi said as she scratched the back of her head nervously. Don't play innocent with me. I know what you're thinking. I won't allow you to hear me. Kashina yelled angrily as she grasped the bars with fury. Kayubi smirked as she remembered that she was the most powerful demon of them all. Oh. And how are you planning to stop me? Kayubi said as she had an evil smile. Kashina became infuriated and began to yell out curses that made the bars begin to steam from the heat. Kayubi made some hand seals and held them towards Kashina. You won't get away with this. You'll see. I'll kill you Kashina screamed out before she disappeared deeper into the jail cell. Poor woman, nothing or no one will stop me from my goal. Kukukuku Kayubi said as she began to return back into the real world. Outside the mindscape. Kashina looked at the sleeping Naruto as she got on the small bed with him. She edged her as she approached his face and was prepping her for a deep until there was a knock on the door. Kashina gasped as Naruto opened his eyes and faced her. Naruto was staring at her with a strange look and asked Kashina-san. What are you doing? Kashina backed off and went to a corner in a fetal position S-san. This got Naruto's attention as he walked next to her and grabbed onto her shoulder. Kashinichan. Naruto asked while thinking what he did wrong. He remembered the incident with AM and realized that saying sent to somebody must be a true insult. Kashina perked up when she heard the different suffix and turned to Naruto with a twinkle in her eyes. Naruto sighed happily as he knew she was better now and turned his attention towards the door and began to walk towards it and whispered Kashina hide quickly. Kashina made several hand seals and she melted into the shadows. Naruto opened the door and immediately got grabbed by a pair of hands before they both vanished from the small room. Naruto. Kashina yelled as she began to run outside. Somewhere in the woods. I will not ask you again kid. Are you a Jinchuriki or not? Answer me. A woman yelled as she punched Naruto continuously. Naruto had a sack covering his face and couldn't see his attacker as she punched his torso and face. Who are you? What do you want? Naruto yelled in between punches. The bag on Naruto's face was removed and his eyes were momentarily blinded from the bright light above him. When he got his vision back he saw a woman in her early twenties. She had blonde hair and her outfit was all black except for her purple fingerless gloves. He sensed something strange coming from the woman in front of him and asked why you have one also. The lady smirked as she approached the boy in front of her and said smugly, that wasn't so hard right. She looked somewhat happy until her face turned serious. I know you also have a demon. I can sense a weak connection between you and your own demon. How did you do that? Tell me now. She began quietly but ended up yelling at the end. Naruto popped his neck joints and exhaled as he began to explain how he did it. And that's how I did it, happy. Naruto finished his explanation. The lady looked at Naruto with a skeptical look and untied him. Show me. She said with a dark tone. My demon is already in a clone's body, I don't think it would work Kirk. Naruto replied but got stopped as the lady put a grasp on his throat. Listen to me please. I don't want to kill you, but I will if you don't tell me she said coldly. Ashina followed Naruto through the connection they both held and spotted a small building with a light turned on. She listened closely and heard Naruto's voice. She sensed something, someone no, a demon. She knew this demon and made a plan. Naruto was being choked to death and without Kashina inside of him, he didn't have enough power to do anything about it. Naruto looked at his attacker and realization struck him. She's the woman from my dream several days ago. He thought as she threw him across the small room. Naruto broke a small wooden table as he fell and used this opportunity to run for his life. He wasn't afraid of the woman until he remembered his nightmare and was now afraid of this woman by a huge amount. He made about 20 shadow clones to be cannon fodder, as she began to destroy them all in small groups. The real Naruto smashed the door open with a flying tackle and ran as fast as he could back to the village until he thought this lady, she's just like me or worse, I don't know her past, and she's just trying to get her demon as far away as possible, I need to help her Naruto said as he turned around to face her. She was breaking tree branches with every single leap she took, she looked feral beyond belief, and it seemed as the killing intent around her made several trees ice cold. On second thought I prefer living Naruto thought as he continued to run, but his conscience stopped him. That's no way to treat someone who shares your burden as well I I'm going to help Naruto once again thought as he turned towards her and set a defensive position. 
Vishina saw this and knew what to do. Her first began to glow with red chakra as she jumped towards Naruto. Naruto stared as he saw the lady closing in on him, he sighed and began to charge also. He thought if he rushed her also, she would back down. She didn't. Naruto was tackled several yards and ended up underneath her as she raised a chakra-induced fist and was about to strike down on him, but something stopped her. Naruto was looking at death as he saw the fist about to strike him. He closed his eyes and waited for death's embrace, but it never came. He opened his eyes only to see red strands of hair semi-covering his eyes and knew who it was instantly. Kishina-chan he whispered gratefully until Kishina dropped a chakra-powered fist into his gust. Naruto gasped as he lost his breath and darkness enveloped him. Mindscape. Naruto brushed himself off as he stood up in the all-familiar sower that he knew well. Naruto looked around him and spotted his attacker several feet away from him. You. They both yelled at each other, although for different reasons, anger, her, and shock, him. Naruto began to back up until a comforting hand rested on his shoulders. He looked and saw that it was indeed Kashina and felt a lot safer. Why do you attack my vassal, mortal? She spoke angrily as the stranger backed up and bowed slightly. I I would like to have the same ability that your vassal has against you, she said with a terrified voice. Kayubi smirked and almost laughed, but managed to keep her icy stare. And what would that be huh? She said as she picked up Naruto with one finger and began play with his hair childishly that made Naruto cool like a toddler. This action made the blonde woman sweat drop and instantly said, that's exactly what I'm talking about. How do you have that relationship with her? She pointed that out to Naruto with a serious tone. She continued however my demon and I have worked together well and have good teamwork, but every once in a while, he tries to corrupt my mind with evil intentions all of my life, I've resisted the corruption through sheer willpower, but now it's starting to make sense the corruption is making sense. I need a way to get him into friendly terms like you too. She said sadly. Naruto understood somewhat what she was talking about and wanted to help her, regardless of the brutal past they had, which was like 15 minutes at the most. Kayubi saw the look on Naruto's face, and she knew he wanted to help. She was afraid of this and spoke quickly that sounds like your problem. I would say sorry but I honestly don't care. Your demon is weak and shouldn't bother you unless you actually succumb into his will. Besides you hurt my vassal, and I can't say I'll ever allow that. Do you understand? This left both Naruto and the blonde woman with gaping expressions of surprise. They knew they couldn't argue with her logic as there was no reason. She had perfect reasons on why not to help. Naruto wanted to help the stranger and decided not to beat around the bush. Kishina-chan, why can't you help um? What's your name? He asked her, to which she replied Yujito Nai, but I prefer if people call me Yujito only. Naruto nodded and said as I was saying, Kishina-chan, why can't you help Yujito-chan with her problem? Yujito-chan. Both Yujito and Kayubi thought surprised as Naruto continued, you are the most powerful and most beautiful demon in all existence, I'm positive that you can do something plus. He said with the most innocent look on his face as he began to compliment Kayubi. Kayubi was blushing furiously as he stretched the suffix, and the compliments changed her mind completely. This kid is good Yujito thought as she knew what he was doing. Yujito blushed also when Naruto added the suffix, but nobody could tell under the darkness of the sower. Of course Naruto-kun, this won't be a problem for me at all. But you owe me, both of you. She said happily like a schoolgirl as she began to get a praise with a childish smile from Naruto. She had no idea she was being played as Naruto thought I can't believe that worked. I shouldn't tell her that I did that, the sad thing is though, she'll probably be proud of me Naruto thought as he held in the sweat. Hold still mortal, this will hurt a lot. Kayubi said as she began to make several hand seals. Four pillars appeared from the ground and a barrier formed around Yujito. The barrier turned completely black and began to shrink at a fast pace. Hey Kishina-chan, is she going to be alright? Naruto asked as he saw the weird transformation going in front of him. Kishina smiled sweetly as she walked behind Naruto and hopped on his back, like a piggyback ride. She crossed her arms around his neck and laid them underneath his head. Maybe, I'm not certain she whispered into his ears. Naruto became feared as he felt her body's voluptuous curves touch his back and asked Kei Kishina-chan what are you doing? Kayubi simply leaned in even closer and snuggled her head into his shoulders as she whispered, almost dead, it's the favor that you owe me Naruto come from now on, you'll carry me like this. Wherever you go understand. She said happily as she made herself comfortable. Naruto had his eyes wide open with shock as he realized how strange he will look with a woman of her caliber clinging on to him all day, every day. How will I explain this to the village? Naruto yelled as he tried not to stutter as Kayubi rubbed her fingers sensually around his neck. Not my problem Naruto-kun Kayubi responded what did I agree to? Naruto thought as she continued to move her fingers. Ijito was in the middle of the barrier and saw her demon, his form began to shrink and seemed to fade away. She felt all the pressure being removed from her shoulders, but knew that he was still there. 
The difference was that she didn't feel controlled. It had worked, she was free of her burden's corruption. The barrier removed itself and only showed Yujito on the floor. She wasn't moving, but she was breathing heavily. Naruto rushed at Yujito and crouched next to her. Hey, are you okay? He asked her with deep worry. Naruto had met another person like him, one who probably understood his situation with the village's attitude with him. He felt a bond form between each other with their qualities. They both have demons in them and blonde hair. Seriously, Naruto liked the fact of having another blonde person in the village. Besides Ino and her clan, there were no other blondes in Kanoha that he knew of, and this made him feel glad also. Ayubi noticed how worried Naruto was for the sad excuse of a woman that was underneath them, and decided to get his attention away from that woman. Naruto-kun, she'll be fine soon. Stop worrying about her she said as she hit her heels on his sides like a horse. Her heels didn't have spurs or anything, but she hit him rather hard. Naruto bent his legs with pain as he arched his back and yelled NYHHH. And began to buck as if trying to get her back, while he sped off deeper into the sower on all fours. Kayubi was having the time of her immortal life as she tried desperately to keep her balance. She was laughing happily, and that made her think. She would always laugh with sarcasm or when she is about to kill someone or be deceitful. Never because someone made her laugh, something Naruto managed to do. She smiled as she began to adore Naruto even more for everything he does. Naruto stopped bucking after 10 minutes after the pain had somewhat subsided and heard cute almost adorable laughter coming from Kayubi. He liked the sound of her laughter and felt even happier as he realized that he caused the humor. He stood up and began to wander through the sewer as Kayubi talked to him about random things and he joyfully asked her things also, that is until they met up with a slightly weakened Yujito who waved at them. Naruto walked faster towards her and said with a tender tone hey, how are you feeling yujito chan This got both of the women's attention as they heard the suffix there it is again. They both thought as Yujito tensed up and Kayubi closed her hand while she was playing with his hair. Yujito blushed and put her index finger alongside her right cheek as she removed her gaze away from Naruto and looked at the floor. Kayubi just scowled as she saw the blush that appeared on Yujito. Yujito tried to hide her blush as she bowed to Naruto and Kayubi and said thank you Naruto for this, I'm really sorry that I did all of that to you, she looked as if ready to cry as she realized that even after everything she did to him, he helped out as if they knew each other for years now. She remembered how he manipulated his demon like that and felt something tug at her heart. She felt jealous and she wasn't sure exactly why. She knew he was just using that way of speaking in order for Kayubi to help out. She didn't seem to like the way he said those words of endearment or the way Kayubi positioned herself on Naruto. It seemed wrong, wrong in a way that made her feel childish as if saying why can't that be me. She gritted her teeth as she was Kayubi move her fingers around his face, massaging his cheeks, and she nearly snapped when she heard Naruto say ah, that feels awesome Kashina-chan. Kayubi returned the angry stare that Yujito gave off. Kayubi's stare basically barked out back off, this is my property. Yujito was going to defy the warning as she then decided to hug Naruto. She made it so she jerked Kayubi's legs away and made her hands grab onto his collar. Naruto was kind of used to hugs, and he just thought that maybe this was an appropriate time for a hug, so he returned it. Naruto was glad that he helped this woman and hoped they remained friends. He was so caught up with the moment that he didn't notice the shearing pain on his back until the last second. He broke the hug and started to scream in agony. What the HHHH Kishina-chan? What are you doing? Naruto yelled as he had fallen to the floor due to the pain. Ayubi gave Yujito death glares and mouthed I warned you to stay away. He's mine. Yujito gasped on how serious she was on the threat and knew that Naruto was in pain because of her. Kayubi removed her nails from his back and proceeded to the blood off of her hand slowly, almost as if she was enjoying the taste. I'm so sorry Naruto-kun. I almost slipped off of you and I will not break the favor you owe me. Please forgive me. She said apologetically, but anyone who could see her face would know right away that she was lying. It's okay Kishina-chan, I'm sorry for yelling, Naruto said as he got back at his feet and looked at a scared Yujito staring at him. Kayubi noticed this and didn't want to escalate any further. We're out of here. She yelled in a hurry as she made several hand seals. Out of the mindscape. Naruto was still lying down as he opened his eyes and saw a peaceful sky, the birds were chirping, and the sun barely resembled one of the afternoon. He liked days like this, cool and calm ones. All those images left his view as he was picked up and had to stand up straight. Oh Kami no Naruto thought sadly as he realized something. Time for the favor you owe me Naruto-kun. He heard before someone landed on his back gently. He then felt hands begin to play with his hair and felt a warm relaxing breath touch his neck. Naruto already accepted his fate and began to look around for Yujito and found her staring right at him or Kishina hard to tell. She had a streak of red underneath her nose as her fists were closed with anger. Kishina growled as she thought damn, just as I thought. She must have gained some of my personality when she entered the mindscape. 
We'll see how this turns out Naruto with a curious look asked hey yujito chan are you okay? Yujito blushed wildly and for some strange reason she began to caress his face as soon as she got close to him. She didn't know why she did it, but she knew she wanted to do it. Kashina growled and began to shift her weight back which moved Naruto back, much to Yujito's misery. Naruto thought he lost his balance and thought nothing of it, but realized the tension in the area. He was confused when Yujito began to touch his face, Naruto smiled at the familiar feeling that he got from Kashina. Naruto had thought of Yujito as someone he can relate with, their past, their hard work, and their hair. He somehow knew that she also seemed to care for him. It was a strange feeling of assurance that she cared, like a bond. Naruto was right, he just didn't know it yet. Kishina felt his feelings and asked with a helping tone hey Yujito, shouldn't you be heading back to your village? The question made Naruto's blood go cold as he eyed Yujito as he waited for the answer. Yujito was taken aback by the question. She expected to find her answers quickly and get back within a week or month, she didn't expect to stay at all. Kishina smiled as she knew she had asked an extremely important question. Naruto didn't want her to leave, but he knew she was probably needed back home. I why yes I need to leave soon she said sadly as she glared at Kishina's victorious smile. Oh, that's too bad Yujito. Kishina said with a hint of sarcasm as she petted Naruto's head comfortingly. Yujito glared her eyes and made several hand seals. A clone appeared of her, obviously made with a tremendous amount of chakra, and began to sprint away. My clone will make sure to explain what happened back home. I think I'll stay she ended with a devious murk as she saw Kashina close her eyes with frustration. Naruto was overjoyed at hearing this, but only showed it by sighing with relief. Kashina being mad was a huge understatement, this woman had begun to infuriate her. Yujito was going to stay in Kanoha just to be with Naruto. The gall that this puny woman held. Still, Kashina couldn't help but smirk when she accepted her as a challenge. The other women that wanted Naruto would stand no chance against a beautiful, aspiring demon overlord, let alone a Jinchuriki that shared some of her personality. A worthy rival indeed Kashina thought as she returned the jealousy-filled glares that were sent from Yujito. Naruto, for the most part, was really happy that Yujito was staying, another person that was a lot like him, demon wielders, hard workers, and blondes. He never once thought on how she would manage to convince old man Hokage on how she could stay without even saying anything to him, but that was a problem for a different day. Yujito chan Kishina's hands tightened on his back which made him flinch with pain, where are you going to stay? Naruto spoke with concern as Kishina's head perked up. Kishina moved her head toward his ear and began to whisper. Naruto's smile dropped downwards as Kishina continued her slow, very detailed, and very serious plea. A trickle of blood came from Naruto's nose before exploding into a river, his face started to change into a deep red as Kishina finished. Well how about it Naruto-kun? She said nonchalantly as Naruto stood still for several seconds. He shook his head slowly while Kishina began to rub his shoulders. Please see. She begged like a little child. Naruto regretted making the deal with her as she continued the ministrations on his body. Ujido could only imagine what Kishina told the boy she was straddling, she didn't know why, but she liked the vivid imagination she was having. I didn't think someone's body could stretch at that angle. Oh Naruto. Ujido drooled as she continued to imagine the obscene acts that Naruto would do. If only she had known of the other girls that had their eyes on him, she snapped out of her hallucinations as she saw Naruto bickering with Kishina. Hey Kishina-chan, what the heck is your problem? Naruto said as he held his hands over his ears. Kishina smirked as she noted the red tint on his face and continued her teasing. Naruto had fallen in a slump as he heard the dirty details. Yujito saw enough and decided to step in with an ahem. Naruto looked up at his savior and smiled happily while Kishina scowled bitterly. Naruto got to his feet and started to walk towards Yujito slowly, not that Kishina was heavy or anything, Naruto already knew to never mention a woman's weight or age, the results were always painful, he had lost a huge amount of blood from Kishina's fantasy sleepover, and could barely stand on his own. As he walked Yujito smiled sweetly and met him halfway. Naruto raised his hand and asked what do you say Yujito-chan, do you want to be roommates? Yujito blinked and a blush formed on her face as she shook his hand. Perfect was the word to describe Yujito's smile, that is until Kishina spoke with an acidic tone. Hey, what about me? Don't I get a say in this? I am living with you Naruto-kun, you'd think you would ask me how I felt about this, Kishina looked sad before shrugging and saying nonchalantly eh, it's fine I guess welcome roommate she said bitterly as she raised her hand towards Yujito. You could make diamonds with the pressure that the hands showed. Naruto gulped nervously as he looked at the women's hands shake with raw power. Kami, do you get off with making me suffer? Naruto thought as he closed his eyes and hoped for the best. But Sasuke. Show me what you got Jouji. Sasuke yelled as he dodged several kunai. The training field was destroyed from all the repeated strikes with his Tenshi no Imnatefk, along with Jouji's monstrous amount of chakra-induced punches. 
These two ninjas became friends one day when Sasuke traveled to the Akamichi grounds to give his door-to-door -door speech on Kami. Chouji, A.N. Or is it Choji? Answered the door to his calm in one speech, a lunch, and a spar later, made them friends. Sasuke wowed him with details about how Kami can change your life, and how faith can get rid of your problems with ease, while well, Chouji listened with utmost respect on the topic. Sasuke sure did change when Kami came into his life, he stopped brooding, he stopped acting like an avenger, and he spoke in complete sentences. Totally different than before, he had a positive outlook on life, and Chouji made his day when he offered lunch. He trusted Chouji, the reason was vague. Was it because he offered food? Was it because he offered to spar? Was it because he was a secondary character in a greater scheme of things? Sasuke didn't know but what he did know was that he was reliable and would make a good comrade when handling the meeting with the village council later on today. The meeting was about teaching Kami in all schools, businesses, academies, etc. Sasuke had a petition with over 2001 signatures that wanted it done. With Chaoji as his friend, he would have the support of the Akamichi clan, along with those that are associated with said clan. Chaoji wasn't a pawn in an intricate plot, he was a friend, a friend with powerful connections. A bonus, one would say. Chaoji began to pant as he looked to the sun and asked shouldn't we get ready for the meeting? It's going to start soon. Sasuke nodded and began to walk towards the village, that is correct friend, let's hurry, and we don't want to be late. Sasuke spoke in between pants. But the council. Sasuke Chiha, you may speak your cause. An elderly woman stated gently as she waved her hand towards the center of the room. Sasuke, along with Chaoji, walked towards the center and held the petition towards the council members. This petition has been signed by well over 2,000 villagers, the petition is for the teaching of Kami in all areas of literature, training, and academies for upcoming ninja and civilians. My friend Chaoji Akamichi and his clan have also agreed to this, which is why I urge you consider this decision. Sasuke said as he bowed slightly. The council, well the clan heads along with the political leaders and Hokage anyway, narrowed their eyes for a moment before Sirotobi spoke out. We'll discuss this in private, we'll return soon. With that, the council, except the civilian council, left the room hastily and began to discuss. We simply cannot allow this to happen. The Achiha is getting too much support, he'll go power hungry like all the Achiha before him, and attempt to overturn us. Hiyashi Hayuga said calmly while the other clan heads, except for the Akamichi, nodded with agreement. Now, I know we cannot trust him with this much power, but my boy surely trusts him. Maybe we can just keep an eye on him. Choza pleaded while everyone else shook their head. For now, I rule that we attempt to get rid of the problem without killing him. Saratobi said calmly as he lit his pipe and began to puff some smoke. The others nodded until Choza spoke out. And how will we do this? Everyone looked at Saratobi with curious eyes. Saratobi exhaled deeply and pondered. He came to a conclusion. We'll have to use his friends. Inside the village. Come on you Gao-chan. You just can't call dibs on him like that. He's a human being. Anko said as she twitched from the glare that Yu Gao gave off. Yu Gao scoffed since when do you care for men like that? Besides, I've known him for years, sure he didn't know I was there for most of his life, but still. You can't have him, he's mine. She ended with a possessive smirk as Anko closed her hand with anger. She's acting like a child. Anko thought as she huffed you to realize how wrong that sounds right. Stalker, cougar, oh there's so many things to call you know she loved teasing her, it was a hobby that she enjoyed very much so. Yu Gao never really participated in the hunt to the full extent, she would just trap the victim and take the reward money if there was one. Yu Gao nearly fell from her chair as she heard the last part. W whatever Anko Chan, you know how I feel about him. And besides you promised you wouldn't do anything with him. She said desperately. Anko chirped happily as she shook her head before leaving Yu Gao alone. Promise overturned. Back with Naruto. Naruto was smiling as he saw that Kishina and Yujito were getting along, sure it freaked him out that whenever they asked something the other would respond with a really big smile, which by the way, were obviously fake, but Naruto being Naruto just shrugged it off. What was strange was Kishina's behavior towards Naruto, whenever Yujito asked something to him, Kishina would place her hand on his cheek and began to run the tips of her fingers across his face sensually. Yujito's eyes would twitch with agitation and had to resort into breathing and deeply to remain calm. Naruto-kun are you okay with her being on your back? Yujito asked as Kishina continued the finger massage on Naruto's face. Kishina shot an angry glare that made the temperature drop by several degrees. Naruto put on his thinking face, puts one hand on his hip while the other hand goes to his chin and began to ponder. Oh man. There isn't a right answer to this question. If I say no then Kishina-chan would get sad or even worse angry if I say yes, then Kishina-chan would tease me about it. Naruto realized in his head as he began to think for an alternate option. He found one but decided not to say anything. 
Ujido raised an eyebrow at his silence and shot Kashina a quick victory glance before setting her eyes on the blonde in front of her and asked well Naruto-kun. Are you okay with her being on your back all this time? Naruto gulped as he felt Kashina tighten her grip on his neck. Naruto began to sweat and decided to speak up. I like having her on my back, she's really soothing when she's not trying to corrupt my morality with promises on bliss, but if had a choice whether or not to carry her I'll say no. This is a favor I owe her, I told her if she could help you with your demon, and, well now I'm stuck like this with her. Not that I mind of course he finished with a nervous laugh as he noticed Kashina's death grip loosen somewhat. Kashina and Yujito were confused, which was Naruto's plan in the first place, he didn't mind, but he didn't want to. Should I be mad or happy? Kashina pondered while Yujito just sighed as her plan was ruined thanks to Naruto's quick thinking. Naruto smirked as he began to walk to the village. The sun was setting which confused him deeply. How can it be this late already? How long was I abducted? He led the way to his apartment while Kashina and Yujito were having a stare down that almost screamed out I'm the alpha woman, you back off. Naruto opened the door and realized one problem, there's only one bed three people can't fit in a bed, while Naruto thought of other ways to sleep, Kashina and Yujito were thinking on something else. Yujito blushed as her mind took off into imagination world as she began thinking all the possibilities that could happen on the small bed. Kashina began to hug Naruto's back and made sure that her would make themselves known to the blonde one. Naruto felt Kashina and blushed heavily. For almost a second Naruto thought mechanically share the bed with Kashina-chan. Don't even think about it. It'll be heaven. Naruto shook his head as if to get rid of the thought that went through his head, something that got Kashina surprised. How the he didn't fall for it. Is my control really that bad now? Kashina thought as Naruto made several clones and sent them outside. A few awkward minutes passed until the clones returned with a mattress and some blankets. They put the mattress on the floor and dispelled themselves. There you go. Problem solved for everyone. Naruto said as he pointed to the mattress. Kashina and Yujito sweat dropped as their hopes got shattered with his innocent thinking. Naruto went to the kitchen and pulled out three ramen packets and began to boil some water. His stomach growled as he realized he hasn't eaten in several days due to everything that had happened to him over the past several days. Haku, Hana, Kurinai, Yugao, Anko, Kashina, and now Yujito, I made so many friends in so little time. I can't lose people like them, they already know of the demon inside of me, and yet they still care for me. I won't let anything or anyone hurt them, they're my precious people. Naruto thought as he poured the ramen onto the water in separate bowls for Kashina and Yujito. They looked at the ramen with a confused look, one that Naruto caught instantly. What's wrong? Is everything okay with your ramen? He asked. I've never eaten ramen before, all I know is that you love this stuff more than life itself. Naruto sweat dropped to Kashina's answers, while Yujito simply nodded in agreement. Kiri didn't have any ramen stands or anything like the sort. Both of the women looked at the food in front of them before shrugging and began to eat. They smiled happily as they began to stuff their faces with the ramen, while Naruto grinned with a sheepish grin. Raymond always seemed to get to his new friends it seemed. Kashina, however, kept her word when she said she wouldn't leave his back for anything. Eating hot Raymond was part of that as some boiling water landed on his face along with his neck and back, needless to say Naruto learned several things. For one, Kashina, despite being the most powerful kitsune in existence, can be a real klutz, and two, jumping into the shower from the scalding pain with said kitsune can lead to probably the most awkward moment in a young man's life. Kashina taking off the very little clothes she had on inside the shower didn't help one bit. A.N. I'm deeply sorry for the extremely late update on this story. I've fallen ill once again and school ended for me which meant party after party non-stop. Also I had a serious case of writer's block which stopped me for a while. This chapter is notoriously short, so I'll add an amic to try and soothe your anger towards me. P.S. Please review. Okay here's the amic. Amic. Shino was thinking on what had happened the other day when he was training with his team. He remembered every gruesome detail. The foam, the cursed foam didn't stop appearing on his face. The seizure-like twitches made his blood run cold, it was terrible. He couldn't control his body, and that unnerved him, not that he would show it. That would be unreal. Shino's flashback on that dreaded day was disturbed when he heard a conversation occurring between two people outside of the small building he was in. Conan. Why are we here? Toby doesn't like it here. One voice whined in confusion. The voice was male, but the tone was strange to say the least. Enough Toby, it's time for your monthly meeting with a psychiatrist, you know you have to go to these things. You drive everyone crazy back at the headquarters, it's for our own good Toby. The other voice responded back with an exasperated tone. The doorknob twisted and a person walked in, clearly unhappy with his situation. The person sat beside Shino and began to play with his fingers in what seemed to be a battle scene in which the person made sound effects as his fingers fraught each other for control. 
The sight alone made Shino move a seat away from the man. The man turned and laid a smile as he reached out a hand towards Shino and spoke out lie. Hello. My name is Toby and Toby is a good boy. Toby doesn't like coming to people like these because they mess with my brains. Toby had his hand reached out as if waiting patiently. Shino stared at the man before him and began to analyze him. In several seconds some of his bugs made their way onto Toby before getting picked off and squished. Shino raised an eyebrow at this and shook his hand. Toby looked happy as he squished more of the bugs that made their way onto him. Toby doesn't like bugs, they crawl everywhere and ruin my fun time. Toby said as he picked off more of Shino's bugs. Shino didn't like seeing his precious bugs getting destroyed like that and asked him a question. Who are you? I've never seen or heard of you from this village before. You don't have any clothing that marks you from any of the hidden villages. You can't be a civilian since you managed to detect my comrades. Shino ended while his stoic cold posture didn't change one bit. Toby grinned even bigger my name is Toby and Toby is a good boy. Shino kept his cool even though Toby didn't even answer his questions. Answer my question, where did you come from? Shino asked once again. Toby sighed as he steadied himself. Toby doesn't know because Toby is a good boy and good boys don't ask questions like that, which Toby is a good boy. When Toby asks that, Toby's friends call him a bad boy, who Toby isn't, but a good boy Toby is. Shino's eyebrow began to twitch with anger. What is wrong with you? By not answering my question you are being a bad boy. You aren't a good boy. Shino replied almost as if agitated. Toby's smile faltered down to a whimper. No. Toby is a good boy. Honest. I really am a good boy. He yelled out with tears running out of his single eye patch. Shino's hands began to shake as if almost to strangle the man in front of him. Shino psychiatrist was going to have a hand full today. An exasperated hand tapped into a wooden desk. Nails were dug into the desk and left ice in their mark. The temperature began to fall, breathing was visible, and overall, Saratobi, the third hokage was, without a doubt, nipping. Aku began as a nice and polite young woman, for the first two days at least. She then talked on when she would be released so she could be with her master, aka, Naruto Uzumaki. Her psychological and physical exams were done within hours. She was a prime candidate for an Anbu, her skills were on par with a regular Jounin, but no. Aku only wanted to be next to Naruto, which led to questions towards why. Haku would blush before her face became serious. Haku would ask for a position that involved being as close to Naruto as humanly possible. Tsuritobi sighed as the desk began to freeze solid. Haku was a patient woman, she was nice, but she wasn't either towards those who kept her away from her master. She eyed Tsuritobi as she awaited his answer. He gulped and began to ponder, he needed to show fearlessness, he was Hokage after all. His reassurance was destroyed when Haku's icy glare began to freeze his goatee. H. Haku-san, as I already explained Naruto already has a sensei, Saratobi felt his facial hair stiffen with ice. H. E. already has the sufficient teammates, he heard his eyebrows crack from the ice. H. E. even has an Anbu as a bodyguard, there isn't anything else that can be done, I'm sorry, Saratobi stopped as his face froze solid. Aku became quite angry as she realized there wasn't a way for her to be near her master. She leaned in closer to the frozen hokage and asked with an acidic tone. Name. His. Bodyguard. Now. She wasn't kidding, her years of killing countless of people were finally shown on her face. Saratobi being scared was a huge understatement, he forgot that he was the Hokage, he forgot his ninja abilities, and he almost forgot the saying that was passed down from father to son, hell hath no fury like a woman's scorn. Saratobi began to write down the name of the Anbu on a piece of paper, and he handed it to Haku with a quavering hand. Haku looked at the paper before it twisted, slightly demonic, smile formed across her face. Izuki Yugao Haku said slowly, almost as she was savoring every single letter of the woman's name. Haku set the paper down and began to move her hands as she concentrated. A small ice figurine formed around her hands, the figurine was beautifully designed into a tiny little woman. The figurine didn't have any eyes just a clear face, her body clearly resembled a woman. Haku smirked as she picked up the small figurine and smiled innocently a little too innocent. She put the figurine down carefully and made another. This one had wild spiky hair, a huge smile, and then Saratobi realized that was supposed to be Naruto. If Saratobi could move his frozen face, it would show complete horror as Haku began to mimic a conversation between Yugao and Naruto, while a third figurine stood in the background, another woman, was holding what appeared to be Senban, as it faced the two talking figurines. Haku moved the Naruto figurine away from Yugao, while she moved the Senban wielding figurine closer to Yugao. Izuki Haku said evilly as she moved the Senban wielding figurine even closer to the other. Yugao she said once again after a short pause as the Yugao figurine was shattered. 
Only the Senban wielder and Naruto remained as Haku stood up from her seat and walked out of the Hokage's office for the first time in days. Saratobi was in the corner of his office in a fetal position as he feared for both Naruto and Yugao. Naruto's apartment. Naruto huffed as he felt a tender hand reaching for his nether regions. He grabbed the hand and gave it a light smack as if punishing it. How did this happen again? Naruto thought as he heard a purr beside him as he scratched the head of the most powerful demon in existence. Naruto had planned on having Kishina having a bed for herself as well for Yujito having her own bed while he slept in the couch. Kishina brought up their deal without haste and said it would be in violation of our agreement. Naruto, being Naruto, whined on how that wasn't fair and how he wouldn't be able to live with himself if that happened. Not only did this make Kishina mad, it also hurt her emotionally. He does, does he find Mu unattractive? Does this body not get his attention? He's taken a liking to Yujito maybe he likes B blondes. Kishina thought sadly as Naruto scratched her head softly. She felt hurt, she felt ugly because Naruto didn't respond to her advances, sure he blushed, but what was the point if he didn't take it seriously? Kishina felt jealous of Yujito, which was strange since Naruto technically slept with her, but he defended the woman that had attacked him and threatened his life. That isn't something you would forgive, let alone protect, the person who did that, he also offered to be roommates right off the bat. Naruto stood up from the bed, much to Kishina's chagrin, and began to walk towards Yujito's side of the small apartment, before a strong pair of hands grabbed his arms and dragged him back into the bed. Naruto was shocked as he saw long streaks of blonde hair obscure his vision. Wait be blonde hair? Naruto thought with shock as he tried to escape the grasp of whoever was behind him. He then felt a hand run down his cheek, and he realized that it was Kishina doing this, only she would do that Naruto deadpanned as she forced him to turn around to face her. His face turned into one of confusion as he saw Kishina with golden locks of hairs that were spread all over the bed. She pouted cutely which made him blush heavily. Kishina smirked and was about to ask whether or not he liked what he saw, until a voice interrupted them. Gee good morning, how did you sleep Naruto-kun? Yujito asked but stopped suddenly as she saw the blonde hair that surrounded the boy. She found the source to be Kishina as she held the boy a little too close to her chest. Yujito suddenly realized why she would change her hair color. As she's jealous. The most powerful demon in existence is jealous huh, did not expect that Yujito thought as a small smile formed around her dot. Naruto didn't know what to think of the new hair color, sure he liked blonde hair just because his hair was also blonde, but it didn't seem right for Kishina. He decided to ask her about it. Kishina-chan, what's up with the hair change? Naruto then slapped a hand on his mouth after he realized his dreaded mistake. Kishina looked livid with anger, she placed her hands around his neck and began to close them slowly. Naruto knew he was most likely going to die from asphyxiation until Kishina pushed him away coldly. Yujito managed to catch Naruto before he smashed through the wall. What is it about me that you don't like? Is it my skin, my face, what is it? Kishina asked silently. Her skin and face also managed to change when she spoke of them. She turned into a pale white, while her face changed to accommodate the new skin color. She was self-conscious on her looks, but only around Naruto. That alone disturbed her. Yujito looked at Naruto as if waiting for his answer. Naruto got closer to Kishina and smiled nervously as he scratched the back of her head. The purr he heard meant he was doing okay so far. Kishina-chan there isn't anything I don't like about you, it's not because you are a demon or anything like that. You're awesome and strong. There's nothing wrong with you and there never will be okay. Naruto said as he made direct eye contact with Kishina. Needless to say, both Yujito and Kishina were impressed on how Naruto fixed that problem. Kishina nodded slowly and changed her figure back to normal. She eyed Yujito's small smile and instantly fought back by reclaiming her rightful place on Naruto's back. She pointed her tongue at Yujito victoriously as Naruto sighed. Akamichi calm. Tauji was in the middle of eating his third breakfast when his father came into the kitchen and sat down next to him. Choza never had any problems with talking to anyone, especially his own son, yet it felt wrong telling him about the decision the council agreed with yesterday. Tauji looked at his father with hopeful eyes, as he hoped it had something to do with the trial yesterday. His father opened his mouth to say something, but closed it again as he thought for the right words. Tauji Choza began as he began to sweat slightly. The council decided against Sasuke's decision about Kami. There is a good reason why they did this, and trust me, it may seem odd but justifiable if you listen first and ask questions later, understand. Choza finished while his son looked disappointed. Choza sighed the Achiha have always been power hungry. They believe to be better than anyone just because of their Sharingan. The council knew of their nature and decided that Sasuke would have too much power for his and everyone else's good. Tauji was about to interject his father, but he continued without haste. They were also worried on the boy's psychological state, he witnessed the murder of his whole clan. 
I'm sorry Chaoji, he isn't sane with his incredible belief in Kami, he needs help, so we planned an intervention along with all the other 9 genin. It will be tomorrow at noon, it's mandatory you show up, that is, if you want to help him Chosa whispered enough as he walked out. Chaoji swallowed and nodded bitterly. His dad would never lie to him about something so serious. There was a knock at his door, one that was a tad rushed and heavy. Chaoji answered the door and saw Sasuke, he was almost jumpy with anticipation, he was smiling also as he made himself inside the household. Good morning Chaoji, any word from the council about our case on Kami teaching? Sasuke said automatically as he headed towards the Akamichi training grounds with Chaoji by his side. Chaoji was at a loss of words, Sasuke mentioned the case as if was his only thought. Dad was right he really does need help Chaoji thought sadly, as he formed his fighting stance along with Sasuke and lunged at each other. Don't hate me after this Sasuke. But Naruto. Pain. Just as simple as that, pain is what most people tend to avoid, some rush right into its grasp, while others have never felt it before. It's what made ninja who they are, sneaky, devious, and fast, just to avoid pain, which usually led to death, but that was beside the point. With Naruto, however, he does his best to avoid pain, except from Sakura, Raymond Burns, and the occasional cat mauling, but for some reason, pain would go out of its way to harm Naruto. It wasn't bad luck or karma, it was just being at the wrong place at the wrong time, or sometimes at the right place at the wrong time. He grew a six ends over several months, one that foretold physical harm in alarming levels, even if Naruto tried to run away once he felt his new sense tingle, it always made things a lot more painful than it should have been. That was the way it has always been for Naruto, and will probably remain that way for some time, but he could live with it, that's what he would always say, but now he really couldn't this time. Breakfast with Yujito and Kishina was actually enjoyable, they didn't fight, and they talked calmly with each other, and Naruto sighed with relief. Maybe they'll be friends now if I jinx this then I swear to Kami I lil I don't know what I'll do. Naruto mentally spoke as he saw his friends laugh at some joke they made. When it was time to leave for Naruto's training that had been neglected over the course of the last several days, Yujito and Kishina became excited for some reason that Naruto couldn't know of, things became interesting. As Naruto stood in front of his door, he began to sweat with nerves, something that Kishina picked up immediately. Narukun, is everything alright? Your shoulders tensed up pretty quickly, what's wrong? Naruto cringed as Kishina had to point that out, he became paranoid after Yujito managed to kidnap him with such ease from the door. He didn't want to bring that up again, he knew that Yujito was beating herself up over the incident and didn't want to open up old wounds. Kishina on the other hand. Huh, I can't believe that Naruto-kun is still afraid of somebody grabbing him as soon as he steps outside of his door, did I say that out whoops well no need to worry Naruto-kun, Yujito is right here. At that exclamation Yujito found herself facing the corner of the room as her forehead touched her knees while a small rain sea hovered over her head. 40 minutes, 41 fox miles, and a promise of Raymon later, got Yujito away from her dangerous depression, and literally out the window, Naruto explained that going through the window will be more physically demanding than just walking through the door. But their group emotionally stable once again, Naruto's training was to resume once they got to the training grounds, something which Naruto wanted more than anything. Nothing was to get in his way again. So close we're actually going to make it. Naruto thought happily as he began to speed up the pace towards the open field. Naruto. 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 Four voices called from different angles in the trees above them. Naruto stopped and fell to his knees and began pummeling the ground with his fists with anguish. Hi there Anko-chan, Kurunai-chan, Yujito-chan, Hana-chan, I thought it was about time I met all of you, don't you think Naruto-kun? Kishina spoke with a bland tone. Naruto didn't even feel Kishina get off of him and moved towards the group of women behind him until Yujito tugged at his shoulders and pointed at the impending doom. No not this now. I wanted to train. Why is it so hard to just train around here? Of all the times a I'll just ditch them, they're down in after all, right? Naruto thought vaguely as he began to inch his way towards the safety of the training field with Yujito. Yujito knew what was most likely going to happen, but she didn't care, she was going to be alone with Naruto, and that's all that matters right? Kanoha isn't friendly with you mountain rats, let Naruto go before we kill you where you stand. Yujito knew fairly well that Kumo wasn't really on fair terms with Kanoha, but she was very loyal to Kumo and wouldn't let anyone insult her home. Oh, and here I thought the tree huggers were peaceful people, they always want peace, but now they want to kill little old me after I alerted your hokage about my visit. I'm here to help Naruto come with his training. Yujito barked back. Her bluff was solid and strong. She just hoped the Kanoichi would buy it and leave her be. The Kanoichi bought it until they realized she had said Naruto kun. They were ready to jump the unknown blonde until they sensed the extreme killing intent coming from the red-headed woman next to them. I don't like being ignored, especially in favor for that pathetic woman. Do we understand each other? 
As Kashina spoke she dropped her killing intent in order to hear them talk. Hana was having a bad feeling coming from that redhead, something wasn't right, she wasn't normal, but she was related to Naruto somehow. She felt a lot like him which unnerved her even more. Okay guys, can we please calm down? I really want to train Naruto attempted to be peacekeeper, but got cut off by 12 pairs of eyes staring right at him. Naruto-kun, can you please leave this to the adults? Kurinai said sweetly. The others nodded with the same sweet smile. Naruto wanted to protest, but just sighed and sat down and began to move his fingers and the ground with a blank expression. He wanted to train, but now he couldn't because Kashina would more than likely murder his friends in a fiery explosion of rage. Naruto began to hear profanities and slaps coming from the group of women behind, and he tried to ignore by humming nonsense. Midway in his wordless song, he heard what appeared to be hooves behind him. Naruto turned and sweat dropped at the image in front of him, it was a horse standing upright, not even a horse in fact, it was plainly a costume. The horse continued its way towards Naruto, with its front hooves pointed towards the blonde. Uh you're getting too close for comfort H horse Ann. What the hell. Get away. Naruto yelled as his head was grabbed by the horse. The girls were too busy ripping each other apart to even notice Naruto getting manhandled by the costume wearing stranger. Honestly I didn't expect to die like this, by the hands, uh, hooves, of a stranger the blonde Jinchuriki thought until the horse began to walk away like if nothing had happened. What the hell just happened? Did anybody see what happy did he be braid my hair? What the hell? Naruto screamed in disbelief as he tried to untangle his hair from the intricate design. Naruto looked at the still fighting group of girl which seemed to have turned into a free-for-all as the punches sounded off. Wow, I don't understand why they're fighting, but if it's for you, my blonde cutie, I guess I can understand a female voice called behind him. I know right. Wait, what do you mean by that? Naruto answered before getting confused. He turned to face the stranger and froze before his somewhat neglected brain melt as he saw the woman from his dream in front of him. Kami help me. Was the last thing Naruto said before he was embraced by the power of fainting. Am I dead? Has Kami finally gotten bored with ruining my life and decided to kill me now after all this time? About time I guess that's a bright light oh no, please no. Curse you Kami and your awesome abilities of irony. Naruto thought before he awoke in the hands of the same red head that caused his terror. She was saying something with a frantic tone, but Naruto couldn't hear anything but a high-pitched whine. A slap to the face brought Naruto out of his moment of confusion and his ability to hear returned. Geez, kid, I know I'm a looker, but you like literally raise the bar about my looks. Guess what, I'll give you a chance just because you're so cute. Mei said with a raised eyebrow and flirtatious grin. Naruto was even more confused, she caused him to faint, slapped him, given him a second chance at life, then called him cute. What is she coming at now? This is too troublesome. Before anything can continue, however, an anbu with a boar mask came up to Naruto and grabbed his arm from Mei. Yuzumaki-san, Hokage-sama needs you at once in the park. Let us go now. Boar spoke until he looked at the tattered forms of Hana, Kurinai, Anko, and Yugao. We'll get some medic nin to come and pick them up, now no haste. He finished as he pulled Naruto away. I'll find you Yuzumaki Koi. Don't you worry about that. Mei yelled after him as she giggled. Boar-san, take me far, far, away please. Naruto said with pure terror evident on his face. At the park. Sasu looked around and noticed that there was nobody in the park. Chaoji mentioned meeting at the park for news on the case of Kami. There was nobody, as in, no civilians. Sasuke sat underneath a tree and began to polish his sword while whispering the good deeds of Kami. He heard footsteps, and plenty of them. He looked up and saw the rest of his squad, each had somber expressions. Sakura wasn't looking at him, but at the ground instead, while Naruto had a confused but depressed shine in his eyes. Sasuke didn't like this, he felt odd, maybe sympathetic or guilty, emotions that he barely started to learn once again. Sakura, Naruto, what's the matter? What happened? Sasu cast as he rose from his spot and walked closer to his team. Sakura turned around and slowly began to walk away towards the center of the park. Sasuke was about to ask but got interrupted by Naruto. Sasuke, follow us please. His voice was dead serious, the complete opposite of his cheerful self. Sasuke followed slowly with a concerned look on his face, while trying to think of a reason on why his teammates were acting strange. The walk was slow, but the tension more than made up for it, it was slightly hard to breathe without causing either of them to flinch, which unnerved him even more. Then he noticed something about Naruto. His hair was braided. He stifled a laugh, which caused Naruto to turn around with a sad look that said don't ask. Once they managed to get to the center of the park, they remained quiet for what seemed to be ages, until he finally said something. Okay, what's the matter with you two? You're freaking me out, you haven't said anything in over 30 minutes. Sasuke didn't scream or yell, but he talked angrily before turning to Naruto. 
and you. Don't get me started with you you, hair braided, emotionally dysfunctional lunatic. Sasuke was trying to make conversation the only way he knew how, insults. Instead of a comeback, however, he heard laughter coming from the both of them. They seemed to lighten up after his rant, and that made Sasuke smile slightly. Sorry, Sasuke-kun, but hearing that, from you. What a hypocrite. Sakura managed to blurt out before falling on her knees along with Naruto, as they tried to catch their breath. I try to make humor and they tell me off that's cool huh? Sasuke thought as his smile remained on his face. They stopped laughing after several minutes and went back into their serious forms. They looked at Sasuke and sat down. Sasuke we're sorry, we've known you for so long, and yet we didn't notice this big dramatic change of yours. Naruto began while he removed a scroll from underneath his jacket. The excuse me, but what are you talking about? Sasuke erupted with confusion. You see, if we had known, we could have helped you with your little problem. Sakura finished while she looked around as she tried to avoid his gaze. Wait what? Sasuke this isn't something to be ashamed of, but it's just not right. You should have just said you needed help not going to these lengths just to get attention. Isn't that right Sakura? Wait what help? Just what is going on here with you two? Sasuke yelled in irritation. Naruto and Sakura looked at each other and nodded. This is your intervention Sasuke. They both spoke simultaneously. Sasuke gaped at his friends and began to back away until he bumped into somebody. He turned and saw Shino Aburam blocking his path with the same scroll that Naruto had. He heard more footsteps and saw the serious faces of the other rookie nine and team guy holding the same scroll. They circled Sasuke and began to unravel the scroll which showed several seals. The seals glowed as they approached the target. Shino was the first, he struck the open scroll on Sasuke's back. He yelled in pain as he kicked Shino away. The kick left him wide open as both Niji and Tenten struck him on the arms with the scrolls. The pain was unbearable and he fell to the floor. One by one the rest of the rookie nine attached the scrolls until they finished. Sasuke rose to his feet slowly and began to wobble around away from his comrades until he saw a familiar face. That to Chaoji. Sasuke said with a downcast look as Chaoji opened the scroll. Forgive me Sasuke-kun. Was the last thing Chaoji said before he struck the scroll onto Sasuke's chest. Sasuke fell onto his knees as he tried to regain his breath, he looked around and saw the faces of his attackers, and they looked horrible, they were forced to do it Sasuke realized before he fell face first. From the ground he could see the look on Chaoji, he took it harder than anyone else, and that comforted Sasuke. It wasn't betrayal, it was an order. Sasuke spoke between coughs. I I understand I don't hold this against you, Chaoji he stayed on the floor, the only noise that could be heard were his coughs. Naruto wanted to help him up but got interrupted by Sakura. Let's give him some space, he may be angry with us. With that said every gen in present left Sasuke alone in the park. Ami-sama, is this another trial of yours? Wait I can't feel you anymore. The seals are repressing my will to believe no. Sasuke inwardly screamed. He could feel the seals on his body begin to burn when he thought of Kami. Kami has helped him so much since he began to fully believe, this was certainly a trail, one that he will not fail. I'll find a way to believe again Kami-sama. I know I will. Naruto sighed, that was the hardest thing he ever had to do. But it was necessary, if they didn't do it, the Hokage in the interrogation and torture department would have. If the Hokage was bluffing, Naruto couldn't tell. He was alone once he left the park, he was near the Hokage's tower when he felt some hands on his back nearing around his neck. He figured it was either a psychopath out in a killing spree who found his new victim, or Kashina. He really didn't know who he preferred, it was a tough call. I told you I'd find you, Yuzumaki Koi. Naruto gasped sharply and began to tremble, but remembered the lesson he learned with Yujido, give everyone a chance. But then again, he didn't even know her, and she was already calling him lover. My name is Naruto, and yours would be Miz. Naruto asked as he gulped the urge to scream. She giggled and put her mouth on the back of his neck, just so he can feel her breath. Whatever you want it to be, Narukoi then she giggled again. Naruto face palmed and wondered why he always met perverts, he figured it gave some greater being the satisfaction of watching his life hit the fan, but stop thinking like that before he resembled Kakashi with his book. Alright, do I know you? Naruto asked as he felt blood rush to his face. She's like a second Kishina-chan. Mei was having a good time, this kid was lining her up with chances for a flirt with every sentence. He may be young, but he must know his way around women I'll stick around him for a bit she thought as she giggled. Would you like to know me? said the spider to the fly. Naruto sighed with relief, will you, at least she wants to talk instead of interrogating. He thought with new confidence. Hey I know, let's get to know each other somewhere more private. Naruto said as he began to carry her toward somewhere private. Wow. He really has been around. I wonder how big Ichiraku's Raymond and Dango stand. Mei's thoughts were interrupted as she spotted the food stand in all its glory. 
Naruto seated her before claiming his rightful stool. Naruto turned and had an expecting expression. I need to know something first do you hate Raymond? Naruto nearly growled as he remembered how his new friends doubted the power that is Raymond. But it was okay, he turned them in the right way and made them love the goodness. The FFT. Who could hate Raymond? Best food ever made from Kami-sama herself. Mei yelled with a fist in the air. Naruto could have cried. The Noha Hospital. Hana, Yugao, Kurinai and Anko all shared a room in the hospital, which was common for ninja, and they all groaned, the free for all against each other, with the Kumo ninja and civilian. The redhead really put a hurt on them, which was really strange. She easily overpowered them all with killing intent and strikes that hurt really bad. But then they both disappeared right before help could arrive. Well I feel like crap, we completely underestimated them. I'm itching for some payback. Wait never mind, that's just my nose. Hana complained as she desperately attempted to force her restrained arms towards her face. The others just mumbled in agreement. What's a Kumo ninja doing in Konoha anyway? They have just about everything we do, I heard they even have their own Jinchuriki Yugao trailed off when she realized the possibilities. She's after Naruto. All of the Kanoichi screamed as they broke from their restraints and jumped through the window. Had they stayed a little longer, they would have seen a Kanoichi enter the room and inspect it closely. The woman cracked her knuckles before disappearing in a swirl of ice. The last thing that was heard in that room was Yuzuki Yugao. The cross at Chirakus. Two pairs of eyes narrowed as they saw Naruto talking to some strange red-headed woman. It seemed as Naruto had taken a huge liking towards the woman within a few seconds of bringing her to his favorite stand. Naruto doesn't like her like that, right? I'm going up there. Kishina thought with newfound determination. What are she going to do now? We almost got caught because of her and her stupid pride. Oh, but Naruto shouldn't be talking to her. We have so much in common. I'll kill her. And I'll almost kill Naruto and heal him just so he can see how much I care for him. Yujito thought as she walked along with Kishina towards the food stand. Naruto was getting to know Mei and was actually learning a lot whenever she wasn't making a comment on his body or how adorable he is. She also loved Raymond. Maybe not as much as himself, but she truly respected the food and that was good enough for Naruto. He was so into the conversation that he didn't even notice Kishina and Yujito make their way right next to him. He didn't notice the warning signs that Mei was giving with her eyes as the women sat next to him. He somehow noticed the boiling Raymond and the rays in humidity and figured out something. Kashina really doesn't like to get ignored, especially if he was involved. He turned around and saw that Yujito had the same look on her face as Kashina did, one of pure anger that pierced the skin and made blood boil with fear. They were staring through him and focusing on Mei. Naruto needed a distraction and he needed one fast. Almost by cue, the stand had new visitors, sure they were covered with bruises, medical equipment and casts, but hey, Naruto used what he could get. That is, until he realized that it was Hana, Kurinai, Yugao, and Anko. That's when everything went tense, nobody made a move, nobody made a noise, nobody breathed, and nobody got hurt yet. Mei, who realized the tension but didn't care much for it, merely shrugged and scooted next to Naruto. Naruto Koi, who are these old timers? That's when all hell broke loose on the food stand, with Naruto right in the center of it all. He closed his eyes and once again waited for his pain threshold to burst. When nothing came he slowly opened his eyes to see Mei, along with the rest of his older friends in battle stances, with a feral look on all of them. The problem was that they were all literally frozen in place, and Naruto immediately perked up as he felt a gentle hand rest on his shoulder. You're back, Haku-chan. How was your time with Jiji? Naruto said with a nostalgic tone. It felt like weeks had passed since he last saw her, and he almost forgot something about her. It was pleasant Naruto-sama, it's nice to see you too. Haku stressed the word nice as if trying to point something out, but Naruto, being Naruto, completely missed it. Instead, Naruto deadpanned as he heard that honorific once again. P please Haku-chan, drop the Sama from my name, it sounds perverted Haku-chan. Naruto pleaded until he noticed that Haku began to walk towards the group of frozen women, particularly a purple-haired Anbu. Haku's face held a venomous grin as she saw the target she had been looking for, one Yugao Yuzuki, frozen in place, ready for the killing. Oh, how much Haku detested killing other people, but it was for her master's well-being. And maybe just a little for her cause, just a little. Haku was remembered how Zabuza killed, within his mist, his victims died without even knowing how, Haku, surprisingly felt that a death would be better off known. To be able to see the face of your would-be killer, right before you die, made the kill somewhat enjoyable. Beers with a cold-blooded murderer who killed for money can do that to a person, especially, if they spent most of their childhood with said cold-blooded murderer. Haku moved her hand right over Yugao and made the ice melt down to her neck. The results were instantaneous, Yugao gasped for breath as she looked at the face of perhaps the palest woman she had ever seen holding a senbon with her right hand and began to inch it closer to her throat. 
Yu Gao gasped as the ice around her proved to be too strong for her struggles, she felt like powerless, useless, the woman before her was torturing her, as she took her sweet time with the senban. Yu Gao's horrific torture was ended quickly as Naruto spoke with an amused tone of, Haku-chan, I don't think that's a proper tool for freeing them, let's try prying them out first. Naruto made several clones, and each began to free the frozen Kanoichi. Haku's eye twitched before smiling sweetly once again. Of course Naruto-sama, please forgive me, I wasn't thinking properly. Haku began as she turned to face Yu Gao and began to melt the ice that surrounded her, before she got to the legs, however, she used her index finger to draw a line across her throat, and then continued with the unfreezing. Yu Gao was terrified of the pale woman in front of her, but then got mad. She said Naruto-sama who is this woman, and I owe you one Naruto-kun. Yu Gao awed as she stretched her body. One by one the Kanoichi got freed from the ice from Naruto clones, except for Kishina, who quote unfroze myself thanks to my hot body. Unquote, everyone, including the people inside the food stand, sweat dropped at her ego. Naruto decided that this moment of peace should be taken advantage of. Anybody here want some Raymond and her dango? He asked as he laughed nervously. The women nodded as they forgot all of their hatred for each other and sat next Naruto inside the stand. They were gulfing down bowls after bowls and sticks after sticks of dango with such enthusiasm they forgot about Yujito and Kishina, well except for Kurunai. She eyed them both along with that new woman, Haku. She had stayed right next to Naruto since they were unfrozen, and beneath those sweet smiles, there were daggers of pure hatred and killing intent. She just had to know about her. Naruto-kun, who's uh, who's your friend there? Kurunai asked nervously, which caused the temperature to drop by a few degrees. Aku put a hand on Naruto's shoulders with a soothing grip and waited for her master's answer. Naruto smirked and decided to embark some payback for getting teased with that damn honorific. Evil beware, she's mean, fast and deadly with the knowledge of frozen water. She'll freeze you where you stand and give your future grandchildren colds. She's Ice Cube, the coolest spandex wearing super ack. Naruto's proclamation was cut short as Haku nearly tore off his arm. She was embarrassed as every single person looked at her with confused amused looks. Her embarrassment increased as she noticed that Yugao had lost all fear of her and was guffawing with the other Kanoichi. Naruto could almost hear his arm tearing apart from its socket and decided to give an actual answer. Ah. T this is H Haku-chan, and she's in the process of tearing my arm off. He yelled with pain as Haku relaxed her grip on his poor arm. The others simply nodded as they restrained from their laughter. Kishina smiled smugly as she decided she wanted to cause some trouble. And, where is she going to stay Naruto-kun, if you don't mind me asking? Everything went quiet as everyone wanted to know the answer. Well, with me I guess, it's going to be hard though. With you already sleeping with me, along with Yujito, we'll find a way Naruto spoke without thinking along with an odd smile on his face. Excuse me for a moment Hana, Kurunai, Yugao, Anko, and surprisingly Mei spoke simultaneously before they disappeared in a sea of smoke. In the distance one could hear the sounds of mass construction happening. Haku, Kishina, Yujito, and Naruto just stared at each other in awkward silence before the women arrived, covered in sweat while wearing construction helmets. They held blueprints, huge blueprints. They held them wide open and smiled. We present the Yuzumaki Mansion. Thanks for watching this video. If you really enjoy this video, like, subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification. Don't forget to support and follow the Theoretically for writing that awesome fanfic, and also make sure to comment on this story link in the description. See you in the next video. Goodbye.